story of Christ and his love. Tell of his part of his pain for him. Others will trust him if only you prove through every moment you Hello friends, we're continuing our journey through the great controversy and today we will focus on a prophecy found in the book of Revelation chapter 13. As we seek to understand prophecy and its many symbols, it's helpful to keep in mind that the Bible is a wonderful book that interprets itself as we compare scripture with scripture. In last week's video, we considered the threefold message found in Revelation 14 and the symbolism found there, especially in the third angel's message in verse 9, where we read about a beast and its image. To understand more about these symbols, we will now step back into Revelation 13, where we will read about a strange new beast. Beginning in verse 11, we read, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, 
and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Who or what is this lamb-like beast that has two horns but speaks like a dragon? Well, the Bible gives us several clues. First, Unlike the previous beasts that we have seen in prophecy that come up out of a turbulent and windy sea, this one, we are told, comes up out of the earth. Furthermore, all the previous beasts representing earthly kingdoms were fierce beasts of prey, a lion, a bear, a leopard, and so on. In Daniel 7, 2, we read that the beasts the prophet Daniel saw in vision were rising up when the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And in Revelation 17, 15, we read that the waters represent peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. But this beast, which, like the previous beasts of prophecy, also represents a nation, is different. It comes up out of the earth, meaning that it arises in a place where there are very few people, and grows up gradually. It appears peaceful at first, but then later speaks like a dragon. In the prophetic timeline, it arises right on time. Now, the book, The Great Controversy, sheds clear light as to who this prophetic beast or nation is. We read the following. It could not arise among the crowded and struggling nationalities of the old world, that turbulent sea of peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. It must be sought in the Western continent. The inspired author then asks, what nation of the New World was in 1798 rising into power, giving promise of strength and greatness, and attracting the attention of the world? The application of the symbol admits of no question. One nation, and only one, meets the specifications of this prophecy. It points unmistakably to the United States of America. While this may seem shocking at first, as we look at history, we can see that the prophecy is true. The nation that was to become the United States first began as a place of refuge for those fleeing religious persecution in Europe. They sought to establish a government that would provide civil and religious liberty. Freedom of religious faith was especially important where every person was allowed to worship God according to his or her own conscience without the government forcing any type of religion. However, prophecy tells us that this once peaceful appearing nation will one day speak like a dragon and will force people to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. In verse 14, we read that this beast told those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Now, continuing in verse 15, we read, He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one 
who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. So these verses reveal that one day this nation that has been known around the world as a place of religious freedom will one day attempt to force everyone to worship a religious power by receiving a special mark. What is this mark? Is it a literal mark or is it a symbol that carries a deeper meaning? In our next video, we will explore more fully what this mark of the beast is and how to avoid it. In the meantime, however, I encourage you, if you have not yet done so, to download the book, The Great Controversy, available in multiple languages at the URL shown at the bottom of the screen. There you will find further explanation of these very important prophecies that we are studying together. May the Lord draw close to you as we continue to learn more about prophecy and what the future holds. I invite you to pray with me just now. Father in heaven, thank you for revealing to us in prophecy, in the books of Daniel and Revelation and elsewhere in scripture, your plans for the future and how things will develop. Help us to realize that every day we must be connected with you recognizing that our religious liberty and freedoms of conscience may be taken away from us, but we can never be deprived of leaning upon you and connection with you. With you, we are safe. You will carry us through even during the most difficult times. Thank you for hearing us in this prayer and bless as we continue to study about these magnificent prophecies in Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Shabbat Shalom, fantastic congregation. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We're delighted to have you join us today for another fantastic Sabbath worship here at New Life SDA Church, 5th Ngong Avenue, Nairobi. Whether you're joining us from our YouTube channel, 2CBN YouTube channel, Radio Neema, or our Facebook channel, we're delighted to have you join us today, and we're thankful that you will join us and have another, another amazing Sabbath worship, just as we will. Today is another amazing Sabbath here at New Life SDA Church. Oh yes, the Total Member Involvement Evangelistic Campaign is coming to an end. And here to join me is our co-host, Angie Wanga, who will tell us all about her experience over the past three weeks. Welcome, Angie. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, Leela. Happy Sabbath, Angie. How was Angie. your week? It was amazing, amazing. Wow, I also had an exciting week. Considering we have had the TMI for now three weeks, and this is the actually last day of TMI, and this is going to be the climax. So you've asked me what I gained from TMI. Yes, indeed. Um, from the last three weeks, I have been really, really enlightened by the amazing sermons by our pastor, George Mwansa, the amazing choir, took the ambassadors, the youth, and the prophecy message, the family life, and the health talks. They were really enlightening. Just to go back to our theme, the abundant life in the now. It really struck me and it really just keeps lingering in my mind of how we need to live the abundant life right now. Not, not any later, but just the way we are. Either you are still in school, you are still single, or you are married. You need to enjoy life just the way you are. Remembering that this is our Father's world, we need not to be worried. We need not to be sad. Amen. Thank you very much, Angie, for enlightening us. I hope you, our viewer, have gained valuable insights on how the total member involvement evangelistic campaign has been over the past three weeks. If at all you've missed any of these amazing sermons from the beginning feel free to check out our youtube channel and rewind and be blessed as many of us have been so indeed the culmination of this total member involvement evangelistic campaign is coming to, is today and what better way to conclude this evangelistic campaign than through baptism joining me is an elder 
Elder Paul Rabala, who has been actively involved in the baptismal department in our church, who will tell us a little bit about baptism and its significance to us as Christians. Welcome, Elder Paul. Thank you so much, Leila. Welcome. So I would like to ask you, why is it that every time we have an evangelistic campaign, probably Camp Ori, Camp Meeting, TMI, why do we always end in baptism? Thank you, Leila. And good morning, uh, viewers. Now, Seventh-day Adventists, as various uh, events, TMI being one of them. And these events are mainly, number one, to tell the world about Jesus Christ. And number two is to enrich already converted, that is, the members who are already in church, we organize such events to also encourage them to be strong in the Lord. So those who have not joined, we also uh, request them to participate such that through these events, they may also know Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So what is its significance, really? Why should people be baptized? baptized? I'll allow me to address the... The matter of baptism in three ways. Uh, number one, baptism is a spiritual event. Remember, when Christ came, before he started his ministry, he was baptized. And um, if you also read the book of um, Matthew 28 from 18 to 20, that is our greatest mission as a as, as, as Seventh-day Adventist. And it says that we go to the world, we teach them, and we baptize them. So baptism in spiritual uh, realms, or uh, spiritual meaning of baptism, is basically accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So your past is gone, and you are starting a new life with Christ, where Christ is the center of each and everything that you do. So you invite Christ to be your savior, that whatever things you do, Christ is the one controlling. So that is the, spirit, the, the spiritual part of it. Now, the physically, when we baptize, we baptize by immersion, meaning that we dip people in, in the water, now, dipping, or when you are baptized, the process of dipping you in water means that you are burying your past and you are starting a new life with Christ. It is a physical declaration. The change that happens has happened in you. That as a person now, to my friends, to my family members, I want to declare to you starting today that I have Christ, I've, I've accepted Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. So when we see you being baptized, we know surely that so and so has been as accepted Christ. So it's a physical declaration apart from being spiritual acceptance of Jesus Christ. Uh, finally, uh, the baptism as a church, we are fulfilling the mission which Christ left for us. So as Seventh-day Adventists, we baptize as per the Bible. So thank you, Leila. Amen. That's so nice to hear. Now, Elder, I'd like to ask, now that we're having baptism today, yes. what are some of the key preparations that people should do who want to be baptized? Thank you. Thank you, Leila. Now, the process of baptism basically start by one accepting. In other words, we acknowledge ourselves as sinners and we are not able to come to Christ the way we are. So what do we do? We seek for forgiveness. So when one has seen his, his state as a sinner and is ready to start a new life, then that is the person who goes through the baptismal pro uh, process. Now the first thing is now our numbers are usually shared. Eh? So whoever may want to be baptized, please, you can contact us through our numbers. Number two, you can also 
approach any of the elders, you will come, we will prepare you. Our church has very strong and Bible-centered teachings, what we call the fundamental beliefs. The fundamental beliefs are 28 in number, and they cut across all the, the, the spheres or all the dimensions within our lives. If you want to be better Christians, we go through these fundamental beliefs, and when we finish, then it is upon the person to decide whether he or she would want to be baptized. Amen. Yeah. Now, Elder, I'm aware that there are many people watching, probably at home or here, even here in church, yes. who haven't really considered getting baptized. What message do you have for them? Thank you. Thank you, Leila. And I want to draw this from the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, when he, when he met Christ, there's something that disturbed him. In other words, he had listened to the teachings of Christ. And he realized that he needed to be, to be born again. What did he say? The first thing which disturbed him was his, his, his status in the society. I want to tell each and every person who may want to, be, to come to Christ that when you come to Christ, let us leave our positions aside. Let us go to Christ the way he is. And uh, when you want to be baptized, or when whoever may want to be baptized, Christ is ready to receive us. Christ is ready to, to actually handle us the way we are. So just come to us. We will go through the teachings, and you will finally be, be, be baptized. The way our church has it, in the book of Matthew, which I already mentioned, that our role as the, those who are living in this era is to teach the world. We share the love of God with them, and if they accept, they be baptized. So we invite each and every member who has not been baptized, please come, come let us be fed together in this pool, in this house, such that when Christ comes, all of us will go to heaven. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Rabala, for enlightening us about baptism this very special Sabbath day. Thank you, Leila. May God bless you. God bless you. Have too. a happy Sabbath. You too. Thank you. Now, there you have it, dear viewer. Baptism is not all about just immersion in water. There's a lot more that comes with it. And I encourage you, if you're not baptized, may you find it in your heart to be baptized any time, any day, because Christ has his, and his love is always there for you. Now I want to welcome you from wherever you're watching, whether you're sick, whether you've had a tiring week, whether you have just had it hard in life lately, come and share with us the Sabbath day, the joys that come with the Sabbath on this blessed Sabbath day, and be as blessed as many of us will be. We encourage you to come over here at New Life SDA Church, 5th Ngong Avenue, together with a friend or two, or even share this with any friend, your colleague, your workmate, your classmate, and, be, and share the blessings that come with this Sabbath. Now joining us in music worship, um, over to you, our choristers, to bless us. Have a happy Sabbath. Thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. Happy Sabbath and a happy day. We are glad because it's the day of the Lord. Uh, people have come. I can see uh, we are almost uh, a quarter of the house. Uh, you are blessed because you have come early in the morning to seek the Lord. Uh, to you joining us online, we continue to encourage you to come and to make haste for the blessings are live when you are here at the feet of Jesus and in this very room. Uh, we will start with a session of music and uh, I want to introduce the team that we will serving with from my father's left. Uh, you can just uh, uh, maybe say hi or happy Sabbath and tell us who your name is. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. My name is Owen Nkwani and I'm glad to be here. Amen. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Gift Akali, and I 
hope that you'll feel at Jesus' feet as you join us in music. Amen. And to my right, God is good all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. My name is Praise Akali, and I'm blessed to be here. Yeah. Amen. And uh, my name is Michael Oru. Uh, we'll be taking you through the session of music. Before we begin, I will ask a gift to uh, lead us in a word of prayer as we begin. Okay, shall we pray? Our dear and everlasting Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and the opportunity to see another day, the Sabbath. Lord, as we begin our music session, I pray you be with us till the very end of the day. This I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, if you have your hymnal, I encourage you to open it up. And if you have it in your, in your phone, please feel free and let us share so that everyone has a copy and we are going to sing powerfully unto the Lord because we are glad and we are happy. Turn with me to song 388, Don't Forget the Sabbath. It's a day to remember. Don't forget the Sabbath. Song 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. Let's sing. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God hath blessed. Of all the week, the brightest, of all the week, the best. It brings repose from
Amen. Turn with me to song 322. Song 322. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Let's sing. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Not of this world, delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of His favor, keep the way clear. Let nothing between, nothing between, like worldly pleasure, a bit of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my own. Nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the means of His favor, keep the way clear. Let nothing between, nothing between, and many are trials, though the whole world against me convene, watching with prayer and much self-denial, triumph at last. With nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of His favor, keep the way clear. Nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of His favor, keep the way clear. Nothing between. Amen. Um, just uh, one number downwards. Um, song 321. My Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I love thee. Song 321. My Jesus, I love thee. Let's sing. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My grace. Me and Paul. 
ships, my pardon, on Calvary's stream. My love, before wearing the thorns on thy brow, if ever I love thee, my Jesus is the Savior. And to the Savior they say, you are the king of my life. King of my life, I crown thee now. King of my life, I crown thee now. Let's go. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall thy glory be, lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary, lest I forget the ceremony, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy Even 
and thy cup of grief to share, thou hast won all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Happy Sabbath. My name is Sheila Nyango, and I'm here to tell you the opening song. And the opening song is song number 39 from the HSDA Imnol Choristers to Lead Us. May we all rise with song 39, Lord in the Morning. Song number 39, Lord in the Morning. I hope we are all there. Uh, I hope we are all there. Lord, in the morning thou shalt heal. Let's sing. Lord, in the morning thou shalt heal. My voice ascending high to thee will I direct my praise. To thee lift up my eyes Up to the hills where Christ is gone To plead for all his saints Presenting at his Father's throne Our souls and our complaints Oh man Spirit, guide my feet in ways of righteousness. Make every path of duty straight and play before my face. The men that love and fear thy name shall see the for the opening prayer. Our kind and dear Lord, everlasting Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your protection that you have given unto us throughout the night and throughout the week until this Sabbath morning. Lord, we pray that you may continue being with us. May you continue protecting us. Lord, this moment we come to you that you may be all, with all the people who are participating today. May you be with them, guide them, may you help them, and may you continue being with us forever and ever, for it is in Jesus Christ's holy name I pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil ones. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. My name is Ida Lee, and I'll be telling the mission story. Before I start, let's pray. Oh, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for being with us throughout the night until now. As we want to start your Sabbath, be with us. Help us to learn something from the mission story. In Jesus' name I pray. 
The title of the story is Glad to be Alive. Our mission story comes to us from India. Shiva only prayed to traditional gods and goddesses. To him, that was the only way of life. He was surprised when his eldest daughter, Arti, worshipped another god named Jesus. But he stopped worrying when he saw positive actions happening in her life. Shiva took one bad fall one day. He was rushed to hospital and his daughter brought him back home. When his daughter would talk on phone with, his, with her friends, Shiva would hear her pray for him. Three months later, he healed, but he still prayed to his gods and goddesses. He took another bad fall. This time, he was hospitalized for 15 days. He, he suffered a hairline rib fracture. The physician recommended total bed rest. When he went back home, his health deteriorated. His eldest daughter decided to take him to an SDA lifestyle care center. He was being taken care of by a young man named Mark. Through Mark was kind and caring. Through Mark, Shiva saw Jesus' love for the first time. For the four months he was there, he was going to church on Saturday. One Sabbath, a visiting preacher went to preach. Shiva felt a strong urge to give his life to Jesus, but family, family issues... But family issues diverted Shiva's attention from spiritual matters. His health deteriorated again. But through Mark and the SDA physician, he gained his strength back. Shiva then noticed a pattern. Every time he would go away from Jesus, he would either get sick or face challenges. Then he decided to give his life to Jesus. He called his daughter and told her, before I die tomorrow, I would, it would be better for me to accept Jesus as my personal savior. Ten months after Shiva took his first bad fall, he was washed in the water of repentance. The 78-year-old man emerged from the waters of an Indian river as a new child of Christ. Today, Shiva no longer prays to the gods and goddesses. He prays to the God of heaven. Jesus has helped me stop smoking and drinking black tea, he said. I am a better person, I feel healthy, and I pray three times a day. He thanks Jesus for keeping him alive even today. I am grateful to Jesus that my daughter took me to the lifestyle care center. He said, otherwise, I wouldn't have known Jesus and got, gotten a chance to accept him as my personal savior. Thank you for your Sabbath school mission offering that helps share Jesus. Love with, love with people in India and around the world. Thank you for your 13th Sabbath offering that will especially go to the project in India and Nepal on March 30th. Thank you and have a great Sabbath. Uh, the, the Lord is good. The Lord is good, and all the time, we thank God for this blessed Sabbath as we conclude our TMI 2024 series. I'm going to share a special thought, um, and uh, before we share, let's bow and pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath. As we share your word, is my prayer that you may speak to each one of us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Uh, I want to share from uh, the book of uh, Exodus, um, chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 20, verse 8. Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, 
nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God um, created, and uh, upon conclusion of his creation, he gave us the Sabbath day to be a day for us to worship him. And uh, uh, just to challenge you today, um, if um, you are really uh, worshiping the Lord as per his prescriptions, in his fourth commandment, he tells us to remember. So this should ring in our minds every moment of our lives. As we ponder about uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, I want uh, us to also uh, take note of uh, the words in our Seventh-day Adventist hymn, no, number 388, and it says that don't forget the Sabbath. The Lord our God hath, hath blessed of all the weak, the brightest. If you look out here, you can see the bright morning that is with us. These are just the testament that indeed this is the day that God hallowed. Of all the weak, the best. I want to believe this is one of the best that we have when we have that true connection uh, with our God. It brings repose from labor. It tells of joy divine. It beams of light. It beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Stanza 2 says, Keep the Sabbath holy and worship him today. That is why we are here, just to worship God uh, today. Who said to his disciples, he told the disciples that I am the living way. And if we meekly follow him, our Savior here below, he will give us the fountain whose streams eternal flow. Let us think about the Sabbath from the perspective of God when he tells us to remember. Are you worshiping God in the way that he desires? Those of us who have a challenge coming early in the morning, can we reflect about this? Those of us who have a challenge turning up in the afternoon to worship God, you know, it's one of the best days. How are you making it be best in your life and best even for the kingdom of God? May God bless us as we ponder upon these words in Jesus' name. Um, Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to us. Even as we proceed with other programs, may you continue leading us through to the end of the Sabbath. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Today, Sabbath school is being done by Madaraka Prayer Cell. Madaraka Prayer Cell comprises of Madaraka Estate, Siwaka, Akila 1, Akila 2, National Housing of Langata Road. We are going to sing a song, song number 195. Showers we be. There 
shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again, over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we Round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now on thy way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. All that today. down for a closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Sabbath school that, that we've had, Father. We thank you for every member of this church that have stepped into this church. For those that are coming, Father, we pray for them that they, you give them journey masses to this place just to come and worship you this day, Father. As you are going on with our program today, Father, we pray that you bless us the whole day, Father, till evening, Father. We pray for every church member who is here. Many of our friends are bereaved, Father. We pray for them, Father. There are people who are sick, Father. We also pray for them. As we separate, go to our classes, Father. Be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. We break for our classes. Uh, we have got a number of classes within the church for the adults. We have the uh, baptismal class uh, on the far um, corner uh, where my hands are pointing or directing at. Uh, we have a number of classes for the children um, at the tents. We have uh, our Sabbath school team and the deaconate team at the entrance of the church just in case you don't know where to go. They are ready and willing to guide you so that uh, you find um, uh, your, the right class and uh, receive the blessings of the Sabbath school. God bless you as we share the word together. Alex attended the only Seventh-day Adventist school on the Andaman and New Cobar Islands. These islands sit in the Bay of Bengal. They are part of India, even though they sit in the Southeast Asian countries and Indonesia has fond memories of learning at this island school. I love teacher, teachers in this school because they, they were teach, they teach me very kindly. The school is based on the Bible. They only have three teachers. Lack in quantity, they make up for in quality of teaching. The school starts with prayer, then after that, the, uh, before they are going to classes, it starts with the um, some story be by, related to Bible. So that they, after telling that, they will teach them one memory verse every day. This school has a positive reputation in the community. Every parent wants to see their child succeed. 
which is why Alex's parents trusted the Adventist school to educate their son. Unfortunately, the school only offers nursery and preschool levels for kids. The students have to look for other education options. Among those, nine were graduated. That means they finished UKG, upper KG. Then we have to go to school because we don't have the higher, higher studies. A primary school we don't have. At his new school, Alex was required to attend class on the Sabbath. But thanks to his prior education, he was able to defend his faith to his teacher. I told my teacher that the first commandment is the, uh, the we have to follow the Holy Sabbath. So I have to go to the Sabbath because I will obey to God. So I told to my teacher that uh, if I don't listen to my Lord, then how how is is it possible to listen to you? So I have to go to church. After discussions between the teacher and Alex's parents, Alex snaps the Sabbath. Alex is not alone in facing the challenge of attending school on Sabbath. Other Adventist students face the same problem. That's why this quarter, we can help expand the Adventist school beyond preschool all the way through high school. Please pray for church over islands. All our church members praying for the an Adventist school in a higher level, that is, till up to high school, because all Adventist uh, children should continue their education here itself without any problem, without any difficulties. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help build the new Seventh day Adventist in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, providing a higher level of education so more people can learn about the love of Jesus. Thank you so much for supporting us through 13th Sabbath School Mission Offerings.
Sabbath. God is good. I want to welcome all of us to today's study, Bible study. And I want to ask all of us, you are welcome, those who are watching us online, also to be a part of our class today. Uh, I want to thank God that it's given us an opportunity to come before him. And uh, before we start uh, our, 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 this week's lesson, I want us to allow ourselves to pray, and uh, then we start. I want to ask uh, my brother to pray with us before we introduce ourselves. Thank you. I want to welcome you once more to the study of this week. And I want to introduce ourselves from my left. It's my sister. Happy Sabbath. My name is Irene Omondi. Welcome as we get into the word of God. Yeah, thank you, Irene. May God bless you as we uh, eat the bread of heaven with you. Welcome, my brother. Introduce yourself. Thank you. I want also to welcome uh, those of us who are watching. I know you are ready to your lessons and your Bible. I know you have gone through this lesson, and we want to go through it in a way that it could be uh, helping us to see the highlights. And also, by the end of this experience, may somebody find Christ. And secondly, uh, that those of us who, who, who have a new energy in our work, those ones who have fallen to be lifted with the psalm. Now, I want us to start from last week's lesson. Uh, longing, longing for what? For, uh, for God in Zion. And this was our last week's study. It was so interesting that we learned about the longing, the desire of being before God. And maybe I can allow one minute to lick us up on what we learned last week. Irene, a word from last week's lesson, please. Okay, so last week we were to just go before the Lord and have a thirst for him. Like Psalms 42 would say, like a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul longs for you. So it should be a desire that comes from within, a desire that comes from an experience that you've had with the Lord. The psalmist says that taste and see, hold, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who is in him. Blessed is he who finds refuge in him. So as we have a longing for the Lord, then in his longing, in his presence, then we get everything we need. We get satisfaction. We get providence. We get protection. We get everything that we need in the Lord. And then we were also told that in the Lord... There is safety. We find safety in the Lord. So may we always get to have that longing for the Lord because in his presence there is everything that you can ever desire. Amen. Thank you, my brother. One word, a minute. Uh, in one last me, week's lesson. Uh, yeah, last week, I think the psalm is through, through and through. Um, above and beyond all the things that they desire, chief of them is that he may dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of his life, right? Elsewhere he says a day in your court is better than a thousand out there. So I think um, Irene has talked about thirsting, but really um, the psalmist longs for, above everything that, and I think we're going to touch on it today again, they long to be in the presence of God all the days of their life. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, a longing was reminding us that where we're living is not home. We desire for a better country. That whose foundation is God. And being in the presence of God was um, really a, a, a real lesson for last week's lesson. Reminding us that in the presence of God, when David was wandering everywhere he could sin, but he longed to be in the presence of God. And that last week's lesson was reminding us, all the Psalms which we did last week were reminding us, good songs reminding us that before God, there's hope, there's peace, there's protection, there's, you know, there's all that you need. So we can't thank God for last week's lesson. No, I want to go to uh, uh, this week's lesson and uh, worship that never ends. And uh, our lesson is drawn from uh, uh, our memo text, it's drawn from the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 104 and verse 33. And the Bible says, I read in your hearing from my lesson, I will sing to the Lord 
as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. I want to repeat. You can get it correctly. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. An eternal work. An eternal work of worshiping God. Number two, I will sing praise to my God while I have being. David, the, the composer of these psalms that we are looking at, he wanted to surrender all his life to the extent that nothing, nothing, whether in the future or the present, should have prevented him from before the, before be the eyes of God. And the end of the lesson he was reminding us that worship that never ends, it means that in our lives, in all things we do, our lives, our way of life, the things we do should be worshiped before God. Now, as I open this lesson, I want us to remind ourselves that it's very important that we act of what we live for. We say of who we live for. We give of who we live for. So I want all of us to really understand that the worship is a continuous experience of one, your position. Where is your allegiance? Who do you revert to in your life? So the right of the lesson, this, the whole of this week, we have been learning about the worship. I want to remind even me, you as my viewer that worship has been a contentious issue between Satan and who? And God. But the ones who have chosen to worship God all the time of their lives, something happens to them. We have examples like Job. When you watch, you truly worship God. And we have others in the, in the scriptures who are reminding us that when we worship eternally, then God works in you eternally. So I want us to open the lesson, but I want to give you just a minute to say about the title and, uh, and also the memo text. Please. Thank you. Worship that never ends. This uh, is a very powerful lesson discussion this morning because our focus being God then God requires us to worship him. The Bible says that they that worship him in John 4, they that worship him might now worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when you worship God, what does God expect from you? God expects us to have a personal relationship with him. It should be intimate, you know. And when we get personal with God, when you take your time to spend time, you alone with God, then when you go to the congregation, then you are able to connect with them because you have been with God alone in prayer. I like what the writer of this lesson says that individual worship of God feeds communal worship with renewed praises. So we need to work on our personal relationship with God. We need to work on our personal worship first before we can join a church, before we can join a congregation to worship God. And so it means that it must be you are your, 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 your desire, it must be a sacrificial thing you do each and every day. It's not like you'll do it on Monday, you skip Tuesday, you do it on Wednesday, skip Thursday. God wants us to have a continuous communication, a continuous seasons and sessions with him in prayer so that we are not dry, so that we are not just feeding our flesh with things of this world and not feeding our spirit. So as we get into worship that never ends, we need to really work on our relationship with God. We need to really work on what feeds our soul before we are even able to start our day and get into the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Having a relationship, you have to worship when you have a relationship. So, brother, yes. Um, I, will, I, will, I will pick from where she's left. Um, worship that never ends. Um, <clears throat> So um, there's, a, there's a famous question, and of course it's in songs, in Psalm 116 verses 12, right? So it says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? If, 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 you, if you give me a favor down here, um, then I can, I can almost, almost always guess that before our journey together ends, you're also going to be in a place where you're going to need me and probably I'm going to pay you back, right? We've had people who are, you know, returning favors and all these things. But in light of this week's lessons, we are reminded that, look, as you look at everything that God has done for you, as you look at how God, the benefits that is bestowed towards you, the only thing, you can never pay God equally. I know when you pray, we say you've given us life free of charge, right? There's nothing that we can ever pay God. So what you can repay God is to have a communion with him. 
to always live your life in a manner that testifies of his goodness when you talked about allegiance i remember that today we are ending the tmi and of course we are having baptism and of course uh, some wonderful children of god are going to make a public declaration that from today henceforth they are going to walk with god yeah so that's worship that that never ends for me thank you that's having a personal connection with god and always paying allegiance to this god and i like the right of us was reminding us that there are, in a wash you can have private worship then you can have corporate worship and it's for the people who have known who they have worship they, they they converge at the one they worship and i, I want us to really just reflect a bit on the people who are worshiping there's a song i love yeah for song 386 486 they sing Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. Either we throw thyself for me, either shall I go. Lifting hands. What's normal in our hands? Sometimes we have shed innocent blood. When we are worshipping this God, our... our, our, our God wants us to lift his hands in the sanctuary. Last week, not about the sanctuary, and we found out in the sanctuary we meet God one to one. And now when we are lifting our hands, there's nothing we are withholding. The right of the psalm, Psalm 134, was reminding us that we come to God open-handed. In fact, uh, in the military, normally when somebody raises up hands, what does it mean? Sare? surrender how much i was seeing this from surrender perspective what are we surrendered are there things that we have not surrendered are they the ones we are hearing our worship before god so i want to really encourage all of us as we are, i know with all of you have been going through this book uh, the psalm 134 that as we go to the summary of raising our hands in the sanctuary that before god what are you holding what are you hiding behind you that our hands are not clean you know so i want to ask that god will give us a revelation as we open yes my brother um, hands or lifting our hands as a sign of honor to god as a form of worship welcome as a, as a form of worship um so when we study some 34 it's a very brief psalm it says three verses it says behold bless the lord all you servants of the lord who by night stand in the house of the lord lift lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the lord the lord who made heaven and earth bless you from zion So while I studied this um this 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 um this portion how uh, this day uh when you lift your hands as you have said it's a sign of surrender and I think the foundation of our worship has brought out um on this day and really uh, in previous studies in this 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 lesson it's um we praise God we worship God from a point of creation and redemption right we are God's both by creation and by redemption right so um when we when we so those are the foundations in which we worship god uh, because he's created us and because he's redeemed us right um uh the other thing that i as you lift your hands i think the people elder who uh come to church and uh, i think in previous uh, preacher said ever said in this pulpit that you might actually come to church and live without worshiping god without you know some of us it's just meeting friends it's all of these things so i think when you come to church i know in the adventist church we do not lift our heart <laughs> a lot when we pray but yeah so as we as we as we have as we worship god um the spirit of prophecy says that our prayer does not bring god down to us rather it lifts us to god so when it um prayer and worship really grants us a presence um i know a fortress in the presence of god and as our worship rises to god the blessings of god flow down to us amen amen it's my sister okay worshiping god in the sanctuary means uh okay lifting our hands in the sanctuary means that we have come to a point where as we had said earlier it's a point of totally surrendering to god you know telling god i am nothing without you i can do nothing i have nothing on my own and so all my rely uh, i rely solely on you because it is you who know me it is you who knows the present the future and the past so if i raise my hands to you if i throw myself before you 
and allow you to do with me whatever you want, then I know I'll be coming out a better person. I like what Luke chapter 2 verse 36 says. That there is this prophetess, I will I'll read, there is this prophetess called Anna, the daughter of Fenuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived her life with her husband 70 years after her marriage and then she was widowed until uh, when she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. So this is a lady who is widowed and uh, well, she realizes that for me to leave this world in as much as I'm widowed, for me to make it, then I only need to be relying on God. And so you are told that day and night she was in the presence of the Lord. Every day she was praying and fasting. As a Christian, are there moments in your life where you surrender to God or you only come to God when now everything else is not working? But when everything else is okay, then you can... You are okay. You can look for solutions from elsewhere, from your brothers and sisters. Some even go to the extent of getting to witchcraft. But lo the Lord is asking us that can we get to his sanctuary, go to his presence with lifted hands and surrender to him. Like Anna, as we have said, as we have seen, can we just surrender ourselves to God and can our lights revolve around the Lord, around worship, around just giving ourselves to God and praying every day. You know, ceaselessly, Second Thessalonians 5.16 would say that pray unceasingly. Are we at some point getting down when it comes to prayer? Are we at some times giving up? The Lord is asking us this day that in his sanctuary we may come with lifted hands and surrender everything to him and for us unto him because our God in as much as is invisible his presence is right with us and we can get everything from him when we only believe that he is able when we only believe and know that he is able to carry us through thank you I want to encourage you I want to ask a question you viewer when you have come before the Lord are your hands stretched and if they are stretched what do you have in your hands Sure, we are New Testament believers. And I liked what was in the lesson, the first Peter chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5 about this son which was rejected. Are we rejected by God? Are we rejected this salvation? Because in the sanctuary we meet God, right? And in this time, the only way people are coming before the Lord were coming with blood. Alright? But in the New Testament believer now, you come before the sanctuary of God with who? Blood of who? Of Jesus. So the only way we can do that, our hands straight before God in sanctuary, is only by having Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage all of us. Maybe you are, you are, you are, you are listening to us today and you are not accepting Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you are, you are rich as a person you come to church, you are returning your tithe, but you have never had a personal encounter with Christ. This week's lesson, this week's study of Peak of Psalms was reminding us that we need to have a personal relationship with this Christ, that you can enter the sanctuary with open hands because Christ is always stretching your hands to you. Please just come to him. I want us to really move. Then when you have read your hands and you make a new song before the Lord, a new song, the Psalm says, Psalm 33 verse 3, Make unto the Lord a new what? A new song. A new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. A new song. A song of gratitude. A song of A song of all kinds of songs. Mm -hmm. My sister, mm -hmm. do you normally have a song in your heart? Yes, Welcome, I do. Please. Yes, I do. The psalmist says that he puts a new song in my heart. You know, many shall see and praise him. The reason why we have new songs in our hearts, as we stayed in the beginning, is when we start thinking or focusing on the good things the Lord has done. You know, when you start acknowledging that by yourself you are nothing, but the Lord God has been able to be good thus far. The Lord has been able to sustain you that far. Yes, life has not been good. Life, yes, things have been tough, but by the virtue of the fact that you are living, you have got all the reasons to thank God because not many are able to be in the position you are. It's ironical in life like that uh, if there's a writer who even said that in life when somebody's praying for a car 
Somebody is praying for an aeroplane. When somebody is praying for a, a wife, somebody is praying for a child. When somebody is praying for a child, another one is praying f- that the child would be released. Yes, comes back home. So life is so ironical. But in whatever situation you are in, there is a reason to thank God. There is a reason to ask God for a new song because these new songs keeps us going. These new songs makes us look at God in a different perspective. Because knowing that the Lord God who has led me in the past is still with me now and is able to carry me through. So it is good to ask the Lord of a new song. He is the one who is able to put that new song in your, in your soul. And when we sing these uh, new songs, the, the psalmist even goes to the point of saying that he is able to play skillfully. You know, David was a, 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 happy, a, a skillful player of the harp. And so he, would, he was able to... Uh, make so many songs, so many beautiful songs. And even as he was out there shepherding, he was able to sing praises to God. He was able to sing of how the Lord has helped him through, of how the Lord will help him through because his focus was in God. The Bible says that shout to the Lord, you know, shout for joy to the Lord. As you're coming to church, are you just coming to church? Because it is Sabbath and not anticipating anything, not being expectant of anything, come to the house of the Lord with shout of joy. Don't come to the house of God and you are gloomy. It's like you have been dragged to come to his presence. Come to the house of the Lord with joy in your heart. May the people you are interacting with say that indeed the joy of the Lord is this person's strength. May they know that you are not coming for war in the sanctuary, but you're coming to meet with the maker. So may our life always tell the world that we serve a living God, that this God reigns, that this God is ours, and we are able to testify of the good things he has done to us through the new songs he puts in our souls every day. Amen. A new song that he gives you, first of all, he's the one who gives the song, number one. Him. Then you have to recognize him, that you have an experience with him, that each and every day he deposits something new inside you, that you can sing of this place of this one, who is giving the song. In fact, uh, 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 Job chapter 30 and verse 26, he gives a new song in our heart. In the night, he gives you a song in the night. He gives you a song in the night. He gives you a song in the day. And does he, you, that he gives you a new song. And there's something very interesting my sister has shared, and I want to share with all of us, uh, as we continue learning, that when God gives you a song, sing it to be a testimony. Mm-hmm. Sing it for somebody else to know that surely the Lord has said something new to you. And it says, I grows from glory to glory. If we are singing of old songs, then it means we are not growing. Mm-hmm. Let's just sing new songs. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? Yes, my brother. Something about the song? Uh, as, we, as we introduced this lesson this quarter, we mentioned that the psalms are in and of themselves interesting, but they get even a fresh meaning when you understand the context uh, in which a psalm was written, right? Um, for example, you know, some of these psalms were coming from the depths of inspiration. For instance, when you look at Psalm 3, it was a time when David was fleeing from Absalom, his son, death was looming, and then he says, many are they increased that trouble me. Many are they which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. So, um, and even the hymns, some of the hymns we, 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 we sing today, they are some of them originally not written. I know Ella, you appreciate music a lot. Some of them were not originally written as music. Some of them were written as experiences that people were going through. And somebody later met it and made it, made it a song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you've said, a song in the night. I know it's not literal. Um, I think we should always pray. Uh, prophetically, let me, let me give it. Um, when, you, when, you, when you look at it prophetically, when you study the book of Revelation, a song... I think is used to depict uh, an experience, right? Mm-hmm. Because then it said that the 144,000 were singing a song, um, a song that nobody else could learn. You know, a song really, a song is just a song. <laughs> if, I, if you join the choir for two sessions, you can learn. So this probably then it means it was not a song, right? The other people, the redeemed, will sing a song of Moses and the Lamb, right? So I think um, a song in that particular context is an experience or a testimony of what they have been through, right? And so when we talk about singing um, the Lord a new song, it is, is it Habakkuk or, or Lamentation that says his mercies are new every morning, right? We should always, uh, to your point, Ella, we should always strive that every day we are being renewed from glory to glory and from grace to grace. 
every day when you wake up lord give me a new experience with you today uh, the hymn writer says plant my feet on higher ground right yeah let me scale the heights and let me let me let me, let me always grow in my experience with you and as, as i grow let me let me testify which i know we will we will we'll talk about in, uh, in the coming uh, basically a new song songs are very important um the Deuteronomy chapter 30, 31 uh, Moses is about to die and God reminds Moses that these people are going to forget me so he told him verse 19 compose for them a song that it can be a testimony between me and them but to be thought to them then they teach their children and then his children so songs are very important a new experience also we have learned that the songs also can give us, you know, a way to keep us in trouble. You know, a trust in trouble. Yes, we can have a good song when things are going well. We can have a good song when nothing is happening except praise. So new songs are very important. Let us seek the experience of God in our lives. Let's ask God, what have you done to us that we are not thank you enough? And give me, plant in my heart, a new song. Amen. A song of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that. Then, now let's move. We may abide after the worshiping. I, I, I like from last week, I like speaking from last week's lesson. A day in the course of God. Mm. I, well, there are a thousand elsewhere. Elsewhere. The tabernacle. A tabernacle is where, I like this from the book of uh, Exodus. And the tent of the meeting. And at the tabernacle of God. Where God used to meet Moses and the children of Israel, one to one. And this, the writer uh, of the psalm is as, then a psalm, reminding us that Psalm 15. Psalm 15 is, I, I was asking myself, if somebody went to where you worship, I don't know where you worship, but somebody go to the, to the gate, that's Psalm 15, and put on the gate, and everybody who reads it gets inside. Can you get in? I, you know, I was asking this, uh, Madam Eileen, and I find out, I might not get in. I'm a, unless I'm redeemed of the Lamb. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I realized it's not about us. It's about God. Mm -hmm. That God's righteousness is only Him who can allow you to come into Him. Yeah. So I like the Psalm 15. Okay, I read something from abiding in your tabernacle. Is that what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After a new song, I'm saying, we want to abide mm -hmm. by your presence. Yes. Yeah, I, it is a question which we must answer in this session. And we are being asked that who may dwell in the tabernacle of the Lord? You know, who may come before God's presence? And uh, Psalm 15 has all the answers, the characteristics of the people who should be dwelling in the tabernacle of the Lord. So I will read Psalms 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? The answer is... He whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart and who has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man, who honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent, who does these things, he will never be shaken. And so it is bare. It is plain, my, our listeners and all of us who are here, that the Lord God is looking, as my brother has said, a heart that is blameless, a heart that is surrendered to him, a heart that is contrite. We are told that a heart that is contrite, he cannot despise. And so for you to come before the Lord, then you must be fit before him you must walk in purity of heart you must be perfect you know you have to be repenting every day our life should be a life of repentance because we never know when sins come we never know when we are straight before the lord we never know what point you have even doubted god so every time we should be coming to god to surrender to ask for forgiveness that is when we are sure by asking that we have been forgiven. That's when we are sure that you have been perfected through Christ Jesus Christ. We also need to be, be, to be covered with his presence. We need to speak truthfully. We need to always honor, you know, be honest in our dealings with people. You need to be very honest because if we are not honest, then we will not be honest with the Lord because the Bible says that he looks at the heart. 
you know, we could be looking at the outward appearance like Saul, Samuel did when he was going to anoint David. But the Lord says that he is looking at the heart. What is it that is, in with, is with your heart? David says that, Lord, I come before you that you may search me and see if there is any wickedness within me. And if it is there, remove it and fill me with your presence so that I am that person you want me to be. And so the the many things that are listed there it's my prayer that i will endeavor to do them it's my prayer that you will endeavor to do them that you may stop gossip you know backbiting and just be kind to people be kind with words so that you may be able to get into the presence of the lord because when we come with all the wickedness that in us and we don't repent then our prayers the bible says they don't even get the roof they don't get anywhere and so all these things we will be doing will be nothing before the Lord. But if we come to him for forgiveness, if we come to him and have the qualities that we have shared, then the Lord is able to make us the people he wants us to be. Yeah, thank you. A, a contrite spirit, God cannot reject. God created me a new heart and refilled me a contrite, I paraphrase, a contrite spirit. You know, we live in a world where is a lot of pride? We live in a world where we are bringing our profession, we are bringing our education, we are bringing all that the world has given unto us into before God. And that's filthy. Our righteousness is filthy rags. If only we understand that, the Psalms 15 will be, uh, you know, a, 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 a mirror through which we can all of us walk through. But I thank God because whoever God calls and have hacked his prayer, he is calling, he sanctifies, he qualifies. So let us not do a bite back but by asking sinlessness, very important by the way for my, my viewer here, sinless and righteousness. All of us here are sinners. We are sun, uh, around the shore of glory of God. Romans 3.23. But the thing is that God himself allows himself to come into a sinner who has allowed him to come into him. It, on this one you seek, just a comment on uh, on, uh, on uh, <coughs> brief comment on the Tuesday but, part. Yes. Lord who may abide in your tabernacle. So that's a question. Um, if you're coming to church today, you probably met somebody or you've probably in the past invited somebody to church and they've told you ah, well, uh, the way I'm looking, I don't think I'm okay to go to church. You know, or I just do not feel ready to go to church right and so normally there is the feeling of there's a way you need to present yourself you know uh, but you've like you've said um if all our filth if all our righteousness our, all our works were you know gathered together and presented to god as a mean for our salvation it would be rejected as <laughs> you know as reason um so um whereas it's important yeah, I, it, the truth is that um the spirit of says if you wait until you're ready to come before god you will have waited too long Right? Come to God as you are. Well, that is true. Um, I like the book of Genesis 35 when um, God tells Jacob, go to Bethel and create an altar there and worship me there. The first instruction Jacob gives his family is, and Jacob said to his household, uh, and to all who are with him, put away the foreign gods and all, the, put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves and change your garments. While it's important that you cannot, you know, um, you cannot prepare yourself enough for God. Also, you cannot just come to God the way you are, right? So as we prepare to, you know, appear before the tabernacle of God. But most importantly, I think the lesson writer highlights when he says a perfect heart, it does not mean somebody who's never sinned. Sinless. It means you come to God and like you were saying, you, have, you do not have a clenched, fi clenched fist. Everything you lay it all before God, you raise your hand. And as the psalmist would say in Psalm 139, Lord, search my heart. Uh, try me and see if there is any wicked way and lead me to thine way everlasting. That's right. Yeah, it's important that um, when who will abide, a question who will abide, only whose pure, perfect heart, perfect heart. But we now we know we can't perfect ourselves. It's only God who can perfect us. My viewer is my plea and my plea this morning. Even as we read this, what am I happening in my heart? What have I counted important that this salvation that God has given unto me? Yes, let's move.
the glory yes my brother clear the glory among the nations among the nation. i will summarize after, it very after, quickly after everything <laughs> after everything i know that's a baptismal class and uh, they're being taught the very basic tenets of our faith and how to grow their faith and um so what was highlighted here is singing praises to the lord first peter 2:9 says um that you are chosen generation a royal priesthood he has called you among you know out of darkness into his marvelous light so that you may show forth the glory right so once you've been called out of darkness into his glory the way to grow our faith is to constantly witness you know um the goodness of god to constantly um you know um tell people all the lord has done to us right uh, the guy in the guy in uh, the guy in John 9 he had not attended any church but his testimony was i do not know who saved me but all i know is that i was blind but now i see if that's all you witness about god uh, you've just said right about enough and of course there's offerings um is it the psalmist or even micah says what shall i bring before the lord you know shall i bring a lamb a ble- uh, you know a lamb without blemish what shall i bring before the lord Yeah, of course I think it's in Deuteronomy or Leviticus I think that says do not come before the Lord empty handed so we should also bring something with us as we come and witnessing yeah um yeah so I think that's what that's Thank what, uh, you. That's what before you. nations nations uh, before you you will come uh, my brother and my sister who's watching us who's listening to us today uh, remember where you are what do people say about you are god this is the very very important for us and for you who is watching us today also this is saying to us the biggest question is when uh, we declare the glory of god what ourselves are we held accountable or account of god that we are not presented him well are there things that we have not done well that the nations are, 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 are blaspheming god because of me are there things that i need to make right today Yes my sister Hayrin a short comment. Yeah, okay thank you. Uh it's it's good that these are reflections of the things that are happening in the society. And uh, the question is are there things as Irene that I am doing that is trying to tell the world that this god is not the person who he is. So is there a way I have misrepresented god in my speech? Do I just talk just because I have a mouth to speak? Do I just watch things because they are there to be watched? Do I just go to places because there are places to be that I should be going to? The Lord God wants us to declare him to the nations in the way he rightfully is. And by declaring him to the nation means we need to praise him. We need to ascribe glory and honor and strength and majesty to him and him alone. Uh, the psalmist says that we should worship him in the splendor of his holiness you know in the beauty of his holiness we need to come before him with offering don't come to him with empty hand we need to declare to the world that this god we worship is el shaddai is almighty god there is no one like god in heaven and on earth who is to be worshiped who can be compared there is no one that matches our god and so as we are proclaiming the lord's kingdom to other people tell the people the experiences you have had with this god what has this god helped you through what has this god done to you many things are recorded in the bible that the lord has done but as an individual can you point to somebody and say that my brother my sister there is this point there is this time i was very sick and i went to god and i prayed and true to his word he healed me there is this time i needed a drench i cried out to god as the psalmist who said i cried out to you and you came through for me and so it is our prayer that as we are proclaiming the goodness of the lord to the world to the nation let us tell people who the lord has done what experiences do you have with this god and so we are told that worship in god involves remembering god's past acts it it involves celebrating his present wonders and it involves anticipating his future deeds so it's something that should be continuous it should be a lifestyle you know when you are telling people that i needed money and the lord gave me my child was sick the lord healed him my child was in depression my child was addicted into something i cried to the lord and he came through by doing that then we are declaring his goodness his faithfulness to the world and we are telling people that even you you are able to trust in this god and he is able to come through for you amen as moses lifted the serpent in the desert so if 
the son of man will be lifted up. We, he, he will draw, not he will draw men unto himself. Many times we have really put ourselves in the place of God. We have done so well in our companies. And when we are called to give a speech, we will start saying how we wake up in the morning, how we have studied, how we have done so many good things. How as I run, I wake up in the morning, four o'clock, I'm running. We don't bring God in the picture. Is there a place we have denied God a chance of Him being glorified? Where God has put you, in the area, your area of inference, maybe in the, in the office, as a student, as a teacher, as an engineer, as a doctor, how much has been God been glorified in the nations? When people come to your, I, I have a testimony of somebody who is a doctor. When he gets to the, his office, the first thing he says, I like to pray before I start. Everybody who gets that office must be prayed for. I thank God for that. That sometimes we can stand, even when the secular world has accepted all, all manner of things, except what? Except prayer. Let's lift God up in all the nations that men may know it's going to work. In fact, Seventh day Adventist, you, you are somewhere watching me or listening to me. Many of us in our offices, people don't know where you are, Seventh day Adventists. Even when I try to pray, we don't even pray. Maybe it's because the things we live, how we live there. But I pray that it becomes our lifestyle, as my sister said. That our life becomes a lifestyle. That this Christ we live in us lives out to us as a fruit to everyone else. When God does not delight in sacrifices. There are so many things we do. We turn our tithes nicely. We are called to church meetings. We are always there. But the question is, does that sacrifice accept before God? Let us go back to Genesis chapter 4. Cain and Abel. Cain. That's a sacrifice. Abel's sacrifice. The Abel is the Abel sacrifice is accepted, and Cain's sacrifice is denied. The question is, what is does God delight in my sacrifice before my heart? Yes, my sister. I will start by reading Psalm forty, uh, Psalm forty, verse six and eight, and it says, "Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud." To those who turn aside to false gods, many, O oh Lord, many, O oh Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you plan for us. No one can recount to you where I, where I, I to, were I to speak and tell them, they will be too many for me. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but. Sorry, I should have started from 40, from verse 6. I started from 4. Let me start from 6. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ear, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll 8. I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your will is within my heart. And so as we look at this Thursday part, we are being taken to what the Lord delights in. You know, there are many things we do. There are many things we give. But if the Lord does not delight in any of this, then we are told that all these things are vain. And so, many a times we are forgetting to worship God. We are forgetting the giver. But we are worshiping the blessings. And that is what this, uh, the, the lesson today is trying to warn us about. Has it gotten to a point where you have now directed your worship from God into the house he gave you, into the car or the children or the husband, you know, the lands he has given you? The Lord wants us to have our worship to revolve about him. The Bible says that the whole world is his. Everything that is in it are his. And so if we would focus in worshiping God alone, then that is what the Lord would want us to do. That is what the Lord desires. God does not desire any sacrifice, as we have said, as we have looked in the, the, the book of Psalm 40. Worship, but only him who created the heavens and the earth. Our suffering should come from our point of acknowledging that, yes, these things I have have come from you, and therefore I give you the allegiance. I give you all my worship because... Were it not for you, then I wouldn't be what I am today. 
I like what the, the, the writer says in the Thursday part that when the unity between the outward expression of worship and the correct inner mot motivation for worship falls apart, rituals usually become more important in and of themselves than does the actual experience of drawing closer to God. So may our worship, may our sacrifice not be a ritual, you know, just a routine. We are coming to the house of the Lord. It's just a routine. It's something our parents have been doing. And so we are doing it because it is something that has been done. Do you have a personal experience with God? Do you have something you can point at and say that I am going to the house of the Lord because I know him and I want to make him known. I know him and I want him to continually be known in my life. Continue before the Lord. The sacrifice the gifts he gives you don't become an idol for you. And finally, my sister, I think very important that we need to give back. It's only ourselves we can give before anything you have could be given. Yes. One um, finally, uh, in the interest of time, I will read the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, from verses 11 to 13. Very briefly, it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Says the Lord, I have enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fats of fed cattle, and do, I do not delight in the blood of bulls, or lambs, or of, or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand? To trample my coats, bring no more futile sacrifices, incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure the iniquity and the sacred meeting. So uh, money, today the money is seen as a means to, I can offend you, and then I slap you with a bundle of notes and you forgive me. And you know, so God says, uh, look, I am not interested in your sacrifices if you continue in iniquity. That's why I think David would say the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite spirit. So I think our sacrifices are only as, a, are accept, as acceptable to God as we, um, we should first give our hearts to God. You know, we should first come to God with a perfect heart, a blameless heart, is when our sacrifices will be acceptable before God. Otherwise, they are an abomination before God. An abomination is a very strong word. It's a very strong word. It's true. Surely we should know that God delights in a contrary spirit. God delights in the sacrifice that he, the, the gift has given unto us. We give it back to him. Then he delights. You know, I, I, my viewer and all of us who are in this study of the, this week, the biggest question has, has been, how do we worship this God? How has been you are worshiping this God? Are you worshiping that God also has given you? Uh, or we do what Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8 says, that we worship with our mouth, by our actions, and in our hearts we don't. This is what the writer was saying. Central to worship is the need of repentance and a true repentance. This should be my prayer this morning. Uh, how has been your worship? How has been my worship? I should introspect this morning, even as we go to a session of prayer, that God will renew our spirit, that uh, uh, God give us a contrary spirit. One thing I said, Niumbie moyo safi, Niumbie moyo mpia, moyo waku kea. God to create us in a new heart that is able to be broken because in our stubbornness we get lost. This is my prayer. That's as I give you 30 seconds for the final word. My final word is, is a question that I would want to pose to everyone listening. God has been faithful to you. Have you been faithful to him? Have you been faithful in your worship to him? Have you been faithful in him just I knew just allowing him to put those new songs in your heart? It is point where it's a time where we go back to God and ask him to make us faithful even as we go about our worship because it's a lifestyle. Um our desire and prayer, I'm reading something from the prologue. Our desire and prayer is that the psalm strengthen us on our life journey and through them we get to meet God daily heart to heart until the day that we see Jesus Christ face to face. How are you worshipping your God? Is your word a true praise? Is your worship a true praise? Can it be acceptable before God? And have you surrendered your life to Christ this morning? I want to make a prayer with you. My viewer and those of us who have been listening in, even as we reflect on our personal life of worship before this God. I pray that God will replace in us a new spirit. He gives us a new walk with him that we can say glory, hallelujah with him. Let's pray. 
Eternal Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you for each and every day you give us new revelations of your word. Thank you because of the Psalms of, about worship that we have learned in the whole of this week that you worship your delight is the one of a contrary spirit. And a worship that doesn't really intervene, uh, uh, change our hearts from you. A worship that is accepted before you is the one which is freed from the heart. What are we praying in our sinfulness to may accept us and cleanse us that each and every day continually we will worship you in truth and spirit. Father, I pray for forgiveness of sin and trespasses. And many a times we have worshipped that what you have given unto us. And many a times we have not declared your, 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 praise, your praises in nations. Many a times, oh God, we feel unworthy to come unto your heel, oh Lord. But I pray in this day you give us a new walk with you. Revive our hearts, O oh God. And Lord, those of us who are giving their lives to you, O oh God, may you, because you know them, Master, may you anoint them. May you walk with them. May you give them, give us, all of us, a new life with you. Father, we thank you for the study. Thank you for the word you ordained for today. Pastor, as we have shared this word, I pray, Lord, it may make a much sense to all of us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you. Until we meet again. Thank you. The hospital ministry plays a crucial cog in the compassionate ministry. Uh, since inception, we've managed to touch the lives of many patients and uh, even their families. Uh, our mandate includes and is not limited to uh, visiting the afflicted in the hospitals, uh, visiting the bereaved, uh, praying with them, offering them uh, encouragement through the word of Christ. We've also managed to uh, uh, raise funds which have been used to clear and offset hospital bills for uh, patients who've, be, uh, who've uh, been unable to clear the same in hospital. We continue with our, with our close partnership with the church and even want to uh, ask you, the church, to join us as uh, we embark on this noble initiative and uh, also leave a lasting impression in the community and the society at large. Thank you. The activities that are involved in hospital ministry is... Uh providing compassion to the sick, reaching out to those who are in need, uh, mostly uh, outside the building, and here we are majorly looking at the hospital, uh, and here we visit the sick, we pray for them, we counsel them, we remind them that there is a, a, a greater person who is in heaven, seated at the, on that throne called Jesus, who is able to actually heal. He is the greatest physician. At the same time, as we provide that compassion, as we give a listening ear to the community out there in the hospital, we remind them that we are coming in to give them hope, the hope of righteousness, the hope of recovery, to give them hope in terms of peace, to help them recuperate uh, quickly so that they can be able to continue with their activities whether at home or uh, wherever they could be and and as we serve them in the hospitals we extend services to them at home and it we have realized that this ministry has truly impacted many because we have received testimonies of their health restoration of the peace that they have encountered and the relationship that they are developing for those who are who are already saved they are developing with christ for those who don't know him they have actually it has act, acted as an eye opener for them to actually know that there's our greatest physician who is jesus christ himself and as we talk of compassionate ministry i'm reminded of matthew chapter 25 and uh, in matthew chapter 25 Jesus packages the message by dividing people into two categories. And he talks about, I was sick and you came to visit me. I was angry and you fed me. And when you look at compassion, we are talking of being able to minister. Now, the disciples were very eager to know, when were you sick? And, and, and such. And Jesus will then say that, 
whatever you did to the least of these ones who believe in me, you've done it to me. This is a call to a ministry that is for everyone. What is that small thing that you can do? What is that big thing that you can do for a ministry that calls for your support? Most of us would always want to serve God, but we don't know how we can go and serve God. Now, this offers an opportunity. And so we are reaching out to you that you may be able to support this ministry in kind. You can give your donations. You can be able to give your monetary support. We can pray for the sick. We can visit the sick. All that we need is you to be part of this wonderful ministry, a blessed ministry that when Jesus decides to talk about blessed of the Father, those who will inherit the kingdom, he says they are they who took part in this ministry. Be part of the ministry. How can you support? There's a church pay bill, 86 1200. You can use the church pay bill and indicate hospital ministry. You can bring your support in kind to the church and you can be able to visit. Whatever you have will go a long way to speak to a soul that Jesus loves them. And that love is expressed through you exhibiting the love. May God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Um, I uh, encourage us to uh, wind up uh, our lesson discussions so that we get to the next program. Um, if you haven't uh, finished, uh, kindly let's uh, wind up so that we finish. Um, let us turn to hymn number 183, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love. Hymn 183, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love.
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, it's yet another beautiful morning that uh, the Lord has allowed us to learn more about our health and our health-seeking behaviors. And uh, this morning, I want us to talk about uh, our rights and responsibilities as patients, even as we seek uh, medical care from different facilities. Let us believe and pray. Everlasting Master, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of the Sabbath. Uh, even as we want to share in these health nuggets, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit may convict us, may teach us, O oh Lord, that we may be able to better take care of our health and that we may be able to adapt uh, better health-seeking practices. We give you glory, we give you honor, for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray believing and trusting. So, uh, even as you seek uh, medical attention from a health facility, it could be a hospital, it could be from a pharmacy, it could be a private doctor's uh, office, you're supposed to be aware, aware about what your rights are and what is expected of you. And that is what I want us to talk about today. And it is important, and as a country, we've come to embrace uh, the rights and responsibilities of patients following the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, where Article 43.1a expressly provides that you have got a right to the highest attainable standards of health care, that the government is supposed to provide for you the highest attainable, the highest that they can provide. So what are your rights even as you seek uh, medical attention? The first right that a patient has is that they have right of access to health care. So you have right to access health care in any part of this country, you have a right to be treated if, uh, if uh, you, you have a condition that requires the attention of a healthcare professional. Uh, secondly, you have a right to emergency treatment in any health facility. Uh, I know we must have heard a lot about it. Uh, a lot of people talk about it in this past week, uh, that when you find yourself in an accident or in an emergency situation, the nearest facility that can be able to take care of you should be able to do what possibly they can do with, the, with their resources and within their powers to actually stabilize you. And uh, these should be able to be provided to you without consideration of cost, without consideration of insurance or any other thing. If you are in an emergency, uh, you have the right to receive emergency care so that you are stable. Uh, you also have a right to be informed about your, uh, your medical scheme or your medical insurance. So you, if you have a private insurance, uh, health insurance, you have a right to know what that insurance covers, to what extent you are covered, so that you are better prepared even as you seek uh, medical attention from a health facility. Uh, like you mentioned, you also have the right to the highest attainable quality of healthcare products. So those working within healthcare facilities and even the government as a whole have got a responsibility of providing you with the highest quality drugs, the highest quality uh, diagnostic equipment, the one that they can attain. Uh, you also have a right to choose your healthcare provider, healthcare professional to conceal such information. So as a patient, you have a right to information if a diagnosis has been made about your healthcare condition, you have a right to be told what that diagnosis is and uh, to receive all information pertaining to your healthcare. Uh, it's also important to note that you have a right to refuse treatment. Uh, so if you do not want to be treated, you have a right to refuse treatment. However, as we know, that rights have got limitations. Uh, so for you to exercise that right of refusing treatment, uh, one, it has to be documented somewhere that you've refused treatment. There has to be a witness. And uh, secondly, uh, it must also be ascertained that you are, uh, uh, you are competent and conscious enough to make such kind of a decision to refuse treatment. So let's say, for example, if you are a psychiatric patient, you may not enjoy that right because you may not be competent enough to refuse treatment. 
Uh, the other rights that you have, you have a right to confidentiality, so whatever you discuss with your healthcare professional should only remain between you and them and should not be shared with anyone else. You have a right to a second medical opinion, so if you feel you've received a diagnosis and you, you doubt it or you're not comfortable about it, you have a right to go to another facility to get a second opinion about your healthcare. You have a right to complain about the services that you've received, and we'll talk about this uh, at the very end. Uh, lastly, you have a right to donate your organs. Uh, so you have a right to donate your organ while still alive, uh, and even when uh, you sleep, you have a right to actually give instructions on, uh, or give out, uh, you know, uh, your remains to be used even for medical research. So you have, uh, those are rights that you enjoy as a patient. But you're also aware that for rights, uh, there are also responsibilities that come with them. So what is expected of you as a patient? One, uh, you're expected to adapt healthy lifestyle and to take care of yourself. Okay? And as Seventh-day Adventist, uh, this is a message that is always emphasized to us about uh, living right and living healthy. You have a, you have a responsibility to have a positive attitude towards health and towards life. So that is even provided in the laws. So we, we have this kind of people when a diagnosis is made, you know, you'll hear them talk of my high blood pressure, my diabetes, my cancer, okay? So you're supposed to be positive about your health. You're not supposed to embrace that disease as if it's part and parcel of you, okay? So you, you're expected to be positive. And the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 actually encourages us and it tells us that we are not given a spirit of fear. So even when, such, uh, when we find ourselves uh, suffering from such conditions, we are not given a spirit of fear. We are given the spirit of uh, strength. Uh, the other responsibility you have is to respect others and not to endanger their lives. Uh, so I'd give an example of someone who smokes. If uh, for one reason or the other you struggle with smoking uh, you are not expected to do it in the presence of others and endanger their lives you are supposed to also consider the, the, the health of other people uh, the other responsibility you have is to take care of your health records uh, so every time you go to a health facility and uh, you are treated and uh, there are documents you go home with, ensure you keep them safely because they may be needed the next time you go to hospital. They'll form part of your past medical history. So it's very important that you take care of any documents and records of your health and of your treatment. You're also encouraged to give uh, your healthcare professional as much information about your health as possible, and the information should be as accurate as possible. So when you go to see a doctor, usually you realize there are a lot of questions they may ask you because they are trying to put your condition into context. So try to give as accurate information as possible and as much information as possible because it will contribute to, uh, to better outcomes when, you, when you're receiving your treatment. Uh, it is your responsibility not to abuse drugs that have been prescribed to you. So you've received a prescription of a drug you're supposed to use for five days and then afterwards now all you do is go to the chemist and keep on picking this drug for one reason or the other. So you're expected not to abuse or misuse uh, drugs that are prescribed to you. You're also expected to keep time, you know, when going to health care facilities so that you do not inconvenience other patients. Uh, when an adult is not competent enough to make a decision uh, about their health care, it is expected that a spouse or uh, a next of kin should be available to protect them and to even to make decisions on their behalf. Sometimes you realize, for example, for psychotic patients, we go and abandon them uh, in the facilities where they are being treated. So it's expected of us as a next of kin, as a spouse, to be there and follow the treatment you know, of, uh, of your relative and be able to make informed consent on their behalf because they are not competent enough to be able to do that. Um, we also expected to raise any concerns. Like we said, you have a right to complain. But then 
there's a responsibility attached to that that you're expected to raise concerns through the right channels. So when you feel that you've not been attended to well in a hospital, that is not an opportunity to go live on TikTok or on Instagram and you know, try to shame the hospital or shame that healthcare professional. But there are channels that are provided. And uh, so that brings us to conflict resolution. If you are seeking healthcare, uh, uh, if you are seeking medical attention from a facility, and you feel that uh, probably you've not received uh, the best of services, and you will want to raise a complaint, there are channels that are provided in the law that allow you to raise such complaints. Uh, but one thing that is interesting about these channels is that they also tend to follow the biblical channels that you are given about conflict resolution. Uh, you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 18, from around verse 15, we are provided with a procedure of uh, actually resolving conflict between you and a brother. And uh, so what does the law provide for us to follow? Uh, the first stage is that you are supposed to lodge the complaint with the healthcare provider or the healthcare professional. So if you feel you've not received the best of services in a hospital, first talk to that uh, healthcare professional who is attending to you and try to resolve the matter. If you're not able to resolve the matter with them, there are other administrative channels within, uh, say, a hospital uh, that you can use, again, to raise the complaint. You could look for the... Alternatively, you could uh, look for the medical superintendent and raise the issue. If at that stage you are not able to resolve the matter, now we have regulatory authorities uh, that oversee practice of different healthcare professionals and you are uh, encouraged to raise a complaint with them. So you can raise a complaint with uh, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council. You can raise a complaint with the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, with the Nursing Council of Kenya, the, the relevant bodies that actually uh, deal with these healthcare professionals. Uh, in law, if uh, that still you do not feel that uh, your matter has been adequately addressed, then the law actually allows you to go to court uh, over that complaint. Uh, but I know as Christians, we have a biblical way of addressing uh, conflict between ourselves and brothers, and uh, we are encouraged to continue pursuing uh, such channels. Uh, otherwise, may God bless you, and may you have a blessed Sabbath. Uh, let us believe and pray. Gracious and everlasting Master, thank you for teaching us about how to adapt better health-seeking practices. Father, we pray that you may continue to guide us even as we seek health care services and that we may do it in ways that uh, give your name glory. Thank you for the Sabbath uh, day that we have and the programs that are ahead. We pray, Lord, that you may go with us. May you be with us, uh, dwell with us, even as we tarry in your presence. For in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning, and uh, I'm going to do announcements. My name is Elder Benjamin Rob, one of the elders of this church. As we start, let's pray. God, we come to you this morning. We thank you, even as we go through these announcements, that you may be able to guide us in a special way that we can be able to implement what we, the plans that we have for the church, and that your children may be of service to you. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. So I believe most of us, if not all of us, are able to have access to our digital version of the announcements. If I'm able to go through all of them, it could take us one hour. So I'm just going to highlight for a few minutes what need, it needs to be highlighted. We have, uh, this morning we have a special church board that's going on, for those who are not aware. Uh, the elders on duty this week, uh, this is 24th of March to 30th of March. Uh, order on visitation is Elder James Tindy. You can reach him on uh, phone number 
0722-907-755. So if you have any issues that needs visitation, please reach out to him so that he can be able to assist. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of the pulpit today. If you have any issues, please reach out to me. Uh, elder in charge of uh, stewardship is Elder Crispus on copper. So if there are any issues, you can be able to reach out to him. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we have a church board. Tomorrow, 24th of March, we have church board, a physical church board. We expect all the members of church board to be able to attend. We are preparing for Holy Communion as we come to the end of the quarter. So in preparation of this, all deacons and deaconesses are requested to come tomorrow uh, at 8.30 a.m. to prepare for the Holy Communion. As they prepare for Holy Communion for all our members, uh, Holy Communion is on 6th of April, 2024. We ask you to prepare to partake in this Holy Ordinance. The next uh, announcement that I want to highlight on baptism, there will be baptism today, immediately after divine service, to mark the climax of the TMI evangelistic campaign. Please remember the candidates in your prayers as they prepare for this special event today. Today marks the end of uh, the abundant life in now evangelistic campaign. The meetings were conducted here in New Life. The main speaker has been Pastor George Mwansa from Zambia, assisted by evangelist uh, Moses Wesonga. Uh, Dr. Ann, Dr. Ross, and Dr. Pacifica. So the church appreciates the members for praying for the success of the campaign and the well-being of the speakers and giving generously for the success of the campaign. And also for attending and inviting friends for the same. Uh, my other highlight that I want to place this morning is on care and concerns Brother James Odiambo, a member of the uh, Teachers of New Life Choir, lost his mother, uh, Elizabeth Award, or Dula, 3rd of March 2024, after a long battle with cancer. The funeral was held on 14th of March 2024 at Kanyada, Omapei County. Uh, Brother James lives in Sunton, Kasarane, and can be reached on... Uh, or 724-351-416. So any member who wishes to visit uh, and uh, pray with the family can reach out to James. The next concern is uh, Sister Gladys Ogega lost her father, Mr. Augustine Ogeto, on 15th of March, 2024. He was the father-in-law to also Elder David Ogega. The burial is... Uh, will be held on 29th of March, 2024, at Keroka, Nyamira County. To support the family, you can be able to reach out to Elder on uh, phone number 0724-596-011. Please, let's remember the families, the bereaved families in our prayers and visitation. It's very important that we do visitation that they feel part of the family. So those are the highlights I wanted to make today, this morning. If you have any concerns, you can be able to reach out to me. If you have any, anything that may have been left out, you can be able to reach out to me. Then we can be able to address it. I want to welcome each one of us to today's worship. As we come to the end of the highlights, I want to ask that we can be able to pray as we welcome our choristers to lead us through the worship service. Let's pray. God, we come to this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you this morning. We pray even whatever uh, announcements that we've made that you can be able to have an impact in our lives and have an impact in the members that we need to reach out to and that order can be placed also in, the, in our church. We want to pray even for the programs ahead of us that you guide us and bless us. This is our humble prayer, believing and trusting Jesus' holy name.
happy Sabbath church. Praise the Lord. I can see bright faces everywhere. I want to invite you to this music session and we are going to start with one hymn and then we are going to have uh, the program proceed like that. Turn with me to song 645, God of Our Fathers. If you have your hymnal, I invite you to open your hymnal and let us sing mightily unto the Lord. Oh, that's me. 
Praise the Lord. I invite us all to rise with the doxology. Let us all be upstanding with the doxology. Let's sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures very kind and loving father who has been living in heaven since time immemorial. Here we are as your children gathered in this place to worship you. As we do this again, we pray for the presence and guidance of your spirit in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior and King. Amen. Good morning and a happy Sabbath. Good morning once again. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of us to our day, our today's worship, being that Sabbath, that high Sabbath, coming at the end of a very vibrant evangelistic campaign, the TMI. 
I just want to see by a show of hands those ones who are truly, truly blessed during this campaign that has went on for three weeks. If you are, just raise up your hand. If you are truly, truly blessed, let me see the hands again. Uh, thank you. I can see a few who are not blessed, but uh, we are praying that uh, today someone would indeed bless you. Uh, let me take then the opportunity to welcome, first of all, our members, New Life Seventh day Adventist Church, 15 Gwang Avenue members. Uh, those ones who are present here, can you wave back at me? Thank you, New Life. You're most welcome. And uh, then I extend the next invitation to our visitors, very important people for us, our visitors. Do we have any visitors today in the house? Visitors, if you are there, please, if you don't mind, you can stand alongside those ones who are putting, put down their names. And we have Sylvia Oyugi. Sylvia Oyugi, wherever you are, just stand up, please. Thank you. I can see Sylvia. She's waved. Kemboy Felix. Kemboy Felix, where are you? I can see at the back, yes. Amos Angwenyi. Amos Angwenyi. Thank you. I can see you. We have got Ruth Nyaboke. Ruth Nyaboke, where are you? Thank you. I can see your hand. Madare North Choir. Of course, these are our visitors. Yes, Madare North Choir, where are you? You can stand up. We recognize you. Madare North Choir. They are there. Choir, can you wave your hand? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, having said that, we also have another choir. The Nairobi East Choral. Nairobi East, where are you? They are there. Hallelujah. Wave back. Thank you. Then uh, we also have another visitor by the name Lole, Lovenia Lusuli. Lolenia, where is she? Okay, thank you so much. She's coming from Baptist Church Parklands. Um, you are most welcome. Then lastly, of those ones who put it down their names, we have got Masi. I think this is Masi. Nkudi, Nkudi or something like that. I hope I'm reading it right. Where is Masi? Are you with us? She's there. Thank you so much. Yeah, at times I have difficulty seeing her. But you are most wel welcome, um, our visitors. So, uh, with that, let me ask our choristers if you can lead us in the welcome song. Then I will present those ones who are serving uh, this morning. Please, as we welcome each other, just greet as many people as possible. Thank you. Please. In the same spirit, may we all be upstanding. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a precipice, what a beautiful leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all our loves, leaning, leaning. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. The Lord has made and the time to be happy is now, and the place to be happy is here.
Thank you. Thank you. I hope that uh, you will make someone happy today in the Lord's house. If I present those ones who are serving uh, this morning, I've got some two announcements that were not read. I will want to read them. The first announcement is from uh, the New Life Youth Ministry. Uh, they have planned and organized for an Easter retreat this coming Easter to be held on the 29th of March until the 1st of April 2024. Uh, they say that they will be residing at Mwembe Resort a Hotel in Malindi. Um, I'll just read what they have said, that we, as the New Life Youth, are requesting for financial assistance to cater for the expenses of our trip. These expenses cater for our activities and any other miscellaneous that they may have. They have given an m -Pesa number for those ones who want to uh, reach out. Uh, this is uh, a number for Ruth Koske. Uh, please, if you want to support the youth, then you can, uh, you can support them through this number. You can take note of that, which is 0713-0713-847-336. Ruth Koske is the person. So if you want to support the youth who are going out, please then hearken to that call. The second announcement is on believement, and uh, it just came in right now. And it reads that Elder Kefa Otung passed on 21st March, father to Paul Otung and father-in-law to Cheryl Aseno Otung. Paul and Cheryl stay at Ngara Housing Project, Desai Road. Please visit and pray with them. They can be reached on a number that they have given, but I'll read it. But in case you want more information, you can always reach me. I'll give you the number or the elder who's in charge of order and visitation. The number is 0727-281-442. 027-281-442. So you pray for this family. They have lost their loved one and also plan to visit with them. With that, then I want to present those ones who are serving uh, tonight, um, rather this morning. I'll uh, start with myself. My name is Elder Tom Umurwa. And uh, those who are serving with us, starting with the choristers, if the choristers can just wave out there. And please wave back to the choristers. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, the sign language interpreter. Also, she's with us. Uh, you can wave. And then, of course, we have got the pianist. You can also greet us. Pianist, thank you. And of course, of course, serving with us also is our church choir. Our church choir, maybe it's just stand up so that we can wave to us and welcome you in a special way. Church choir, new life, church choir. Thank you. Wave back together with the other uh, choirs. Now, those ones serving, we have um, the one who's doing welcome and introduction, that's myself. And then the one who will be doing scripture reading is Dr. Ross Misati. Dr. Ross Misati, if you can just stand and wave. She has been one of the speakers. I'm sure Pastor will introduce her more later. The one who's doing pastoral prayer is uh, Evangelist Moses Wasonga. Evangelist Wasonga, if you can just wave. One of the speakers we have had for the last three weeks. Great, he will be introduced. And then we have got the one doing overtory and stewardship is uh, Dr. Pacifica Onyancha. Dr. Nyancha was also with us. Thank you and most welcome. She will be doing offertory and stewardship. And then, of course, we have got the children's corner. The children's corner, we've got Darwin and Joshua, Harriet Samala. Harriet is there, yes. Uh, where's Darwin? Thank you. And there's also Joshua. Thank you, they are there. And of course, with them, we have got the proactive kids. The proactive kids, where are you? Can you stand up and wave? Proactive kids, they are there. They will be serving today. Thank you. Uh, with that, then uh, we've come to the end of announcements. And may God bless. Not announcements, but welcome. Welcome. 
Our scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 2, verse 10. John is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John, chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, And said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. And said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. May the Lord bless the scriptures. May we now rise with our theme song, song 590, Trust and Obey. Trust and obey. Song 590. Trust. Let's sing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory! Sheds on our way, while we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust. And obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden can bear, not a sorrow we share, but a toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a crown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love Until all on the altar we lay For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows Are for them who will trust and obey Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do. When he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We shall remain standing as we pray. A loving, eternal, heavenly Father, 
We have come together from all walks of life to worship you according to the commandment. Thou hast told us to labor for six days and to rest on the seventh day, the Sabbath. And now that we have come, we pray that you may accept our worship, accept our singing, accept our praises, accept our prayers and petitions, accept us as we are as your children. And we pray that while we are here, the very thing you ordained for the Sabbath may happen in our lives, that we as well may be sanctified and we may be blessed while abiding in your presence. We present to you this morning our burdens and ask for your relief. We bring to you our sicknesses and ask for your healing. We bring to you our sins and ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, we bring our thanksgiving and pray that you will accept them and that you will multiply your blessings upon everyone presented here. We present each family that has come to this place represented by husbands, wives, children, that Lord, you will bless our homes because we have come to worship you. We pray that you will bless our worship today and Lord, that you may remember your man's servant as he stands to speak this one more time, that you may put your words in his mouth, that he shall speak that which is ordained of heaven for the salvation of someone here today. And Lord, may you minister your grace to us. May you, the Holy Spirit come and abide. And may we listen to you speak to us at a personal and individualized level, that we may present ourselves to you a living sacrifice. We pray, O oh Lord, that you'll bless New Life Church. You'll bless the leaders of this church, the pastors, the elders, departmental leaders and members. Let us all have the unity of the Spirit and let each of us use our talents to glorify your name. This day we ask that, Lord, you may bless those of us who have decided to follow Jesus. That as they begin their new journey in Christ, that, Lord, it may be a genuine walk, a closer walk with thee. And every new day will be a day of discovering the riches of your grace. Lord, we pray that we all who have had opportunity to hear your word day after day, may this word not rot in our minds, but we pray that it may come as rain to us and bring forth fruit out of us. Now, Father, may you be glorified for this TMI that has gone by. May you be glorified for every speaker who spake. May you be glorified for every life that is touched. And we pray that when the gates of heaven go open on the hinges of grace, that your children in this city and beyond who receive this message will enter in together with those unnumbered millions who shall enter. Bless us and accept our worship, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God, church. Praise God again. So wonderful to continue worshiping God this day. And we want to thank him that he has given us an opportunity again to worship him through our giving and returning. I say giving and returning because we will be returning our tithes and we will be giving offering according to how God has blessed us. And at this moment, I, may I request the deacons and deaconesses on duty to stand wherever you are. I believe you are positioned yourselves. Can I see them to be sure that yes, they are there? Those on duty, thank you so much. And uh, before we, we collect, I want to us to just reflect as to why we need to return our tithes and give our offerings. In the book of Deuteronomy 16, verse 16 and 17, God required the children of Israel to gather, and when they, they gathered, it says in the verse 17 that you shall not come empty-handed, but you should bring your offerings according to how God has blessed you. 
And I believe that is the response we are having today, being the children of Israel at the moment. So before they start, shall we pray? Gracious, loving Father, once again, we continually lift our voices to you. We are grateful, my Father, that you've given us a chance to come and worship you. At this moment, we want to worship you through our tithes and offering. We pray that, Lord, you may accept them, bless us, and even uh, plan for us to get more, to continually bring. And in case of somebody who did not get this time, my Father, remind us always that we may come with something to offer to you because of the many blessings that we enjoy each day. As we start, start with us, Lord, and we finish. Thank you because you've accepted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of us who, have not, uh, who, are, who are not giving uh, through cash, I want to read the pay bill for the church. And uh, uh, the account is, uh, the pay bill is 86. 861200861200 and for the account number please put what you are putting or what you are offering to and that includes the tithe combined local judge budget the judge uh, building development evangelism so depending on what you want to give that is what you are going to write at the account number May God bless you as we are blessed with the choir. I can see they are ready. We'll continue until we finish and we'll be led by the choristers in giving out the overture. Thank you. Kijana mmoja tajiri alikwenda kwa Yesu kumuuliza Nifanye nini nitaye kuokoka Nimeshika amri zote na torati Nimeshika yote nifanye nini Nifanye nini Rabbi nipate uzima milele Nifanye nini nitaye kuokoka Nimeshika amri zote na torati Nimeshika yote nifanye nini Nifanye nini rabi nipate uzima milele Uzamali ya kukawia Waita nikisha nifuate Habari mumu kwa matajiri Nataka kusema na weleo Uwezi, 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 uwezi Kwenda biguni na mali Dunia na vyote bija zato Vyote mali ya mumu Kukawia, waita, kikisha nifuate Habari 
tutatuta ya sahau Tuasungumia lakini ya tabita Weka hazina kwa kazi ya ke mungu Toa nipo upate ni baraka Weka hazina kwenye mifuko isi otomboka Tuasungumia lakini ya tabita Weka hazina kwa kazi ya ke mungu Toa nipo upate ni baraka Weka hazina kwenye mifuko isi otomboka Uzamali ya mungawira Waitaji kisha nifuate Habari mungu kwa matajiri Nataka kusema na weleo Uwezi, 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 uwezi Kwenda minguni na mali Dunia na vyote vija zavyo Vyote mali ya mungu Kusema na weleo Uwezi, 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 uwezi Kwenda minguni na mali Dunia na vyote vija zavyo Vyote mali ya mungu Uzamali ya pogawia Waita kikisha nifuate Habari mungu kwa matajiri Nataka kusema na weleo Uwezi, 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 uwezi Kwenda minguni na mali Dunia na vyote vija zavyo Vyote mali ya mungu
offertory response.
Jesus has a plan for every boy and girl. Let us change ourselves by changing how we think. If we change ourselves, we can change Africa. We can change Africa. We can change the world. Good morning, church. My name is Mashi Samara. I will be telling the children's story. It is entitled, From Victory to Victory. This story is about when the Israelites left Egypt. The key text comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 57, 15, verse 57. It says, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Before we begin, let us pray. Oh God, thank you for this day. Thank you for protecting us. Please protect us as we do the children's story. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Samuel and Rebecca were slaves. Mother and father were slaves. Uncle Josiah and Sarah and his friends Eli, Adam, and Jael were slaves. In fact, everyone they knew were slaves. They had been slaves their entire lives. They often had mother crying because she was sore and discouraged. They felt like this too, but they could do nothing but follow what the Egyptian masters ordered them. Moses had been in camp after staying in Midian for a long time. He had seen all the bad things happening to the Egyptians. Samuel and Rebecca saw how God protected them. One day, after making mud bricks, they came home to mother and father whispering. Father told them that Moses was in camp and was giving special instructions for something that would happen that very night. Samuel was worried because he was the oldest son, but father told him not to worry because they were going to follow God's instructions. They changed into their traveling clothes and sandals. Mother and Rebecca made the bread they were going to eat with their meal, and father and Samuel made the lamb. Father told Samuel a very important part of getting ready was the blood on the doorpost. He watched as father took a leaf from a tree and painted on the blood. This blood meant that the Israelites were ready to leave Egypt and had followed God's instructions. Then they ate the lamb, me, lamb and some bitter green herbs. Then they had to wait. They waited for a very long time. Finally, Moses came and told them, Let us go. Pharaoh has ordered us to leave Egypt. Samuel was overjoyed. God protected them. He was happy. He gave father a quick hug, then joined mother and Rebecca as they were packing the leftover bread. Then mother took a bag and put in the gold and other treasures given by the Egyptians. Then Samuel stood proudly with his father, mother, and sister as they started their journey. After that, he saw his friends Eli, Adam, and Jael. They were safe. Samuel could not keep from smiling. Amen? Amen. The lamb in this story represents, represents Jesus who would die on the cross for our sins. The blood in this story represents faith and forgiveness. The objects such as flat bread, walking stick, and sandals represent readiness. The people had to wear their shoes and have their belongings packed so they could leave at a moment's notice. Freedom was the pride because they were ready. The, mo the message for this story is Jesus wants us to be free from slavery of sin and leave this world to go to heaven where he has gone to prepare us a place. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm going to say a memory verse. The memory verse comes from the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 30. It says, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our, our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify himself a people that are his own eager to do what is good. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm also going to be saying a memory verse coming from the book of uh, uh, Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21. It says, our citizenship is in heaven and we are eagerly awaiting a savior from there, Jesus Christ, who enables himself to 
who enables his steps to change our lowly bodies into a generous body like his. Amen.
music the lord bless you and keep you we also remain appreciative of the ministries of the other servants of the lord the choirs that are ministering to us today the mother and all church choir our own church choir the choruses choir the proactive choir there are more that we even don't have names for and we are grateful praise the name of the lord we now come to the climax, really, of the abandoned life in the now evangelistic campaign series 
that we began on the second of this month and we praise God for the blessings of this event. We praise him for the word that he gave us through his servants as we assembled in his presence every evening. Many of you who are privileged to come physically and those of us who are uh, who remained in the assembly of the Lord virtually. We praise God for his blessings. As we come to the end, I, I am indebted to give gratitude to God for the servants of the Lord that has ministered to us uh, through this campaign. Uh, the, the, the choristers, the, uh, the choirs, the pianists, uh, the instrumentalists, uh, all instrumentalists, including, of course, the pianists, um, uh, our sign language, uh, servants of the Lord, uh, we praise God. And we praise God for uh, the guests that the Lord sent us to minister to us. And it is my honor just to appreciate them and to thank them. We were blessed with the ministry of uh, the servants of the Lord who gave us the word of God, but also we were privileged to hear counsels on matters, our health, and also matters, our family relationships. Now, we were also blessed with the prophecies of hope, uh, and it is my pleasure just to appreciate these servants of the Lord who ministered to us during this event. Uh, during this event, we were blessed with the ministry of Dr. Anne Mudacha, who took us, who, who gave us counsel, who gave us health nuggets uh, during the first week of the event, during the health uh, part of the program, and we remain grateful to her and her family uh, for the ministry they rendered to us and we pray for God's blessings upon her. Um, we also were blessed in the subsequent week with the servant of the Lord, Dr. Pacifica Onyanja, uh, who brought us to knowledge on the significance of being well mentally. I came to learn during this week, whereas it is good to be healthy uh, physically, it is equally very critical that we should be healthy mentally. And if anything, our mental health has a way it affects uh, either positively or negatively depending on its condition. So if there is one thing to care for is that mental health because if we are not well mentally, it has negative effects on our physical health. And the word of the Lord has guided us, did us to appreciate that as we prosper and are well spiritually, nourished spiritually, we may be well physically, starting with our mental health. Uh, Dr. Patricia, we are very grateful. We pray for God's blessings upon you and your family. Dr. Patricia is a doctor by profession, uh, but this week, she gave us a portion of her, her expertise in medicine on matters mental health, and we remain grateful. The Lord bless you. And the last week, which was the third week of the, our campaign, we had the, the ministry of the servant of the Lord, Dr. Ross Misati, who blessed our families, our family relationship, and she uh, she gave us wonderful and very informative and insightful uh, counsel and instructions and information uh, on relationship family. And we are very, very grateful, Dr. Misati. We pray for God's blessings upon you and uh, your family. The Lord bless you and keep you. Yeah, because uh, when the family is not well, there is nothing we can do. When we are not well at home relationally, there is very little that we can be able to achieve. And so we are indebted indeed to these servants of the Lord for their ministry. 
during this campaign as well, we were privileged to have the ministry of the servant of the Lord, uh, brother, evangelist Moses Wasonga, uh, who works with the Amazing Facts uh, International, uh, and we praise God for Amazing Facts for releasing the servant of the Lord, the brother Moses, to minister to us. He took us through Bible prophecy, and uh, we are confident because the prophecy, as it is bred, brought in the Word of God, uh, is a light to us so that we don't walk uh, in darkness. Now we walk in the light of knowing where we have come from and where we are going on account of Bible prophecy. Uh, we are very, very grateful and can walk with confidence in our spiritual walk. Of course, finally allow me to just thank God for the ministry of the servant of the Lord, uh, Pastor George Mwanza, who came to us all the way from Zambia. We remain grateful uh, to the uh, conference and the union and SID division for giving permission to the servant of the Lord to come and minister to us. Pastor George Mwanza uh, uh, is married uh, and uh, is married to Helga uh, Mwanza and they are blessed with five children. Those of us who have been here know much about the pastor's family, but allow me for the reason of time just to say this. They are blessed with five children, Mwabe, and now we know what Mwabe means. And uh, Mwila, uh, Mutiata, Rebecca, and uh, Rachel. Uh, Shepherdess Helga, we are grateful for permitting your husband to come, to be away from you, to be available to us. We pray for God's blessings upon you and uh, your children. PKs, we are grateful for uh, permitting your dad to come and minister to us. Pastor is a pastor, servant of the Lord of great experience. He has served as local church pastor. Currently, he pastors Janji, Seventh-day Adventist Church, but he has also served as a district pastor in many districts. He has served as a conference and union departmental director. He also has served as division departmental director, communication to be precise. Uh, during the time when we were together with Zambia in the same division, EAD, and when that division was realigned, uh, and we became ECD, and the southern part of Africa became SID. He continued as communication director of the AID division, and uh, he also has been lecturer at Solusi University. We are grateful for the resourcefulness of the servant of the Lord, and uh, we pray for God's blessings upon you. Pastor, for accepting our invitation, the Lord bless you and indeed keep you for what you have done to us. We will hear the word of the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I once again, I would like to thank God for providing this opportunity for us to meet in this manner, to worship him and to get something from his word that encourages us to be strong and for some in the audience to be connected uh, for the first time uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to thank the leadership of uh, this congregation, Pastor Kali and uh, his associates uh, for the able manner in which they have looked after me. I have been telling them that during these three weeks I have been around, it's almost as if God decided to put me on break. We were having meetings in the evening and some of the meetings we took time, some of the times we took time to uh, visit uh, some of our members, we had a great time. The people that have ministered to us 
our team uh, in the Department of Communication here, our young people, camera people, those in the control room, our musicians and, and uh, all the, the people that have been responsible for making these meetings colorful. I thank God for them and I pray that you will continue to bless them. This morning, I would like to speak on the subject, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And as I do this, I also wish to recognize the important role that our singers play. Those who came from a different congregations to join us in worship. We are thankful for their music ministry and we pray that God Almighty will continue to hold them together and uh, give them strength to minister in these uh, difficult times. The best is yet to come. In the book of John chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says, And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You've kept the good wine until now. Obviously, it's important that we give a context to this particular Bible reading. And so please turn with me to John chapter 2 from 1. This is what the word of the Lord says. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. What a beautiful story. But the interesting thing is how John writes this story. Um, in journalism, perhaps they could have given him six out of ten. This is a wedding, and the principal characters, the lady and the, the man who brought the people together, were supposed to be mentioned. I know that Jesus did something remarkable in the story, but at least the names of the couple should have been mentioned. And when you read it from a journalistic uh, view of point, you somehow get away feeling that there is something wrong in the manner John writes this particular story. But then, wait a minute. John was inspired to write this particular story. And when he writes it, 
He puts Jesus as the focal point in the story. And indeed, this is as it should be. In the words of John the Baptist in John chapter 3 verse 30, He must increase and I must decrease. We are all writing our own stories and the question is, as you write your story, as you live your life, who is the principal focus of your life? In the words of the apostle, in the words of the apostle, Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Jesus. It's no longer I that live. That's the issue. As you live your life, wherever you are, wherever God sets you, and you remember, we have taken time uh, 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 to, to show uh, that wherever God has put us, he has located us there strategically. The question is, as you interact with people, as you do your work, what is it that comes out of your life? Is it Jesus or yourself? So when John writes his particular story, he understands how important Jesus needs to come out of this particular story. Because, my dear friends, when we talk about what is important in this life, when we talk about things that make sense in this life, we are talking about Christ and how he has impacted your life. That is what is critical. As you write your story, who is the focus? Is it George Monsa or Jesus Christ? Now notice, the people are having a wonderful time. It is time to chill. I love the, the beautiful idea that Jesus uh, I could take time to go out and just have a wonderful time. Many times when we look at our Lord Jesus Christ, we're always tempted to think that the only things that would make sense to our Lord are those that would have something to do with forgiveness of sin and people getting converted. Yes, these are important themes. But Christ also understood that there is a social angle to life. Many of us, we are working all the time. We can't find time to chill. We can't find time to relax. And here in this particular story, Jesus puts it clearly. He puts it before us that it is important to remember that life has a social angle to it. So he is invited and he takes this invitation. Now, notice the people that are invited in the story here. Uh, the mother of Jesus, John records, she was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. We will see how important these people whose names I mentioned how important it is that they were in the story. So the, the festivity, the people are having a wonderful time. And as everybody is happy, they are drinking and having a good time. Then suddenly the unthinkable happens. Wine runs out. Wine runs out. We have talked about this many times. We will repeat it for the sake of those who have not been coming. There is a balance to life. That life is not just about having wonderful times, mountaintop experiences where God shows himself uh, in blessings that we describe as being positive. I have my children, and my children are doing well in school. Uh, my kids were ill. They were sick, and we prayed, and God healed them. 
My kids sat for this particular exam and we prayed and God helped them to succeed to go to the next level. We all are happy to talk about blessings that appear positive as far as human life is concerned. And we forget that as far as God is concerned, life also has a negative side. Down in the valley, when it appears as if God has forgotten about us, he doesn't care about us. Well, the Apostle Paul teaches us an important principle in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, where he says, I have learned the secret of being content, whatever the circumstances, whether well-fed or hungry. And in verse 13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. We need to emphasize this aspect to life, that life is a balance between low moments and high moments. They were swimming in glory, happy to attain this particular wedding, and yet... The unthinkable happens. Wine runs out. Wine is going to run out. Whether you like it or not. I remember a few years ago, I was going through my uh, photo albums. And then I found a picture of my late mom. I was so excited. My kids, the last ones in the row, never saw their grandmother. So I was so excited to find this particular picture of my mom. And, uh, you know, uh, with excitement, I called uh, the, the girls. I said, guys, please come over. I want you to see my mother. And I presented a picture of my mother, and everybody looked at the picture. Then the youngest, Rachel, looked at it and said, ah, she is ugly. I was hurt. Because I knew my mother was a pretty girl. But you see, time has a way. Time has a way. It turns things Around once upon a time, my mom, who was beautiful through the process of years, she lost it. Let me tell our young ladies, those who like to flaunt images on Facebook and uh, 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 giving the impression that they are invincible now. There is going to come a time when the wine of your beauty is going to run dry. If people are looking at you today as you, as you walk, you know, all the eyes of men turn on you. There's going to come a time when nobody will look at you. The wine will run dry. Let me speak to my young people today. When you have the strength to do God's work, when you can turn your life to God now when you are young, do it because there's going to come a time when the strength will be gone. The wine of your strength is going to go. It is coming. So now when you have the strength, Turn your life to God and do what it takes to make sure that your life is useful uh, in the community where you live. Wine will run out whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your account. There's going to come a time when the wine of your wealth will run out. It is simply a matter of time. It will happen. So now, when you have those means, as this church sits to plan what we have to do in order to have an impact in this community, avail yourself 
avail your resources because there is going to come a time even if money in the bank will be there there's going to come a time when your money can no longer be useful because the church of God will be in the wilderness we will not be worshipping as we are worshipping so in the story here at John said it he tells us wine ran out and uh, so the mother of Jesus and I'm glad there is somebody in the story who knows exactly what needs to be done now obviously Mary had an experience with this son she knew that this was the expected Messiah when she goes to approach Jesus to do something about this. It is with a view at the back of her mind that Jesus could perhaps take this particular moment, perform a miracle that will confirm that he is the expected Messiah. That is what is in the mind of Mary the mother. This is how Ellen White puts it. So when she says they have run out of wine, uh, she was somehow, and Jesus understood this, that this is what she meant. Uh, uh, Jesus, I want you to perform a miracle here so that the people who are gathered here will know that truly you are the Messiah that we expect uh, to come here. But you know, that aside, something that is remarkable about what Mary does is that many times as God's people, when we run into trouble, we go to people. Mary does not go to people. She understands that when you run into trouble, go to God. How many times will I say this? Whatever challenge you could be passing through in life, the first point always must be God because when you approach God God will not talk to other people about your need he will protect the privacy so every time you find yourself challenged please your first point must always be seek God there is nothing impossible with God but many times we find ourselves running to people and you know, as we run to people, people go to people to talk about us. You know, this person, even simple things like salt, this person, even simple things, they're always begging. We do have, even in the churches, people who are fond of begging. They could even be here. You see, let me give you some counsel from the word of God. When you find yourself in a straight place, don't talk to people. If you have a need, don't talk to church members and, 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 and plead and ask for help. Go straight to God. And God is responsible. He understands the one who could provide assistance. And this is what we see in this particular story. Mary doesn't go to people. She goes to her son whom she understands to be the savior of the world. They have run out of wine. I'm so glad there is a Mary in this particular story. Why am I glad? Well, my dear friends, I am glad uh, that Mary appears in this particular uh, story because it is through her that the miracle that is going to happen will take place. Now, don't tell me that Jesus did not understand that there was something wrong in the situation here. Jesus understood there was a problem. He understood. He saw it. Uh, let me put it to us. There will happen uh, many situations where God is not going to do his thing simply because the people who are supposed to connect with God are not in the picture. Oh, when you read the word of God, we are told in Matthew chapter uh, 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 chapter 5, verse 13, that we are the salt of the earth. We are told in 
Matthew chapter 5, a 14, that we are the light of the world. Wherever God has put us, we are there strategically. There are things God cannot do until the people who are sought seek him for help. If Mary had not been in this particular situation, let me tell you, my dear friends, Jesus would not have performed this particular miracle. So where you are, you are so important to the equation that you need to remember to light your a light. You need to remember to play your role. Yesterday, I was with uh, um, one of our leaders, Paul, uh, who happens to be an elder. Uh, a few days ago, we had gone to uh, 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 Paul as a place, um, and uh, we, we, we had supper with some of our members here. And uh, on our way to his place in the night, we passed through uh, 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 some slum. What is the name of that slum? Kibera, yes, Kibera. And, uh, you know, so uh, I say to Paul now, this is night time and I would like to, you know, uh, look at this place and see how it looks in, in, uh, uh, during light hours. So I said, fine, we will arrange uh, for us to go there. Two days later, it happened. In my mind, what I was thinking was that, you know, we'll just have to pass along that uh, big road. Uh, on the right-hand side, there is the slum, and we would see it. That is what I was thinking. But he had other things in his mind. So he contacted his cousin. He said, cousin, I want to bring my guest who is a pastor from Zambia to have a feel of life in Kibera. So we went to Kibera, we used the road that, you know, goes through there. And um, then at some point we parked, and after parking, we, with uh, this cousin of his, he began to lead us uh, through, uh, going down. And as you look at the structures, I had never seen anything like this in my life. I look at the narrow uh, passage uh, uh, ways and, 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 and uh, the, uh, the, the, the tinned um, uh, buildings and, and uh, everything appears not to make sense. And, and, and this man is guiding us until finally we get to the place where he calls his house. I can't believe that this is a house. So we knock, he knocks. And somebody appears and opens the door. Again, I cannot believe that this is a house. We go inside. Everything is so strange. We sit there in the living room. What appears like a living room. And uh, there's uh, his old mother who hasn't been feeling well there. I mean, I can't understand. But when this guy begins to talk, everything changes. My whole perspective changes. That they are in Kibera. You have somebody who is living out the life of God in that particular forsaken community. He begins to talk how God has been so kind to him. How he, in the community there, people actually call him as pastor. Because many times he brings guests. You know, it is a difficult thing to take people in that community. But they have known him as a person who talks to people. A person who understands life. Then as he speaks there, he says, you know, uh, as a human being, as you sit here uh, with your human understanding, you might think this is, a, uh, this, this is a small place. But this is a big place. With God on my side, this is a big place. It changes everything. As I look at this man, his conditions... Are all the things before me there. And yet in those conditions. This man is able to testify. About the goodness of God. A witness. Where God has put you. A witness. Because there in Kibera. John 3.16. God loved the world so much. That he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him, it doesn't matter that he lives in Kibera. That person.
person is a child for whom God has love and runs after. That individual who lives there, even if they were to be the only ones upon the face of the earth, God would have sent his son to die for them. I was challenged. I was challenged that a person living in those conditions could be uh, 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 could speak so confidently, could speak uh, uh, um, so glowingly. And I asked myself, how many of our people, I asked myself, how many of our people, how many? Most of us who are here, perhaps, a good number of those who are in this audience, perhaps, have never taken time to visit a place like that. Oh, my dear friends, wherever God has put you, I want you to remember that you are his light. In this particular situation, Mary becomes that light because she knows where to connect. If she had not been in the picture, that miracle would not have happened. Let it be said in the community where you live. Let it be said at the hospital where you work. Let it be said at that institution as a teacher where you operate. Let it be said that at the marketplace where you operate from, that because of your presence, people can see the light of God in the area. Let it be said, run away from this thing of just being a person who comes to church and you don't care that the reason why God puts you here is to be a light, is to be sought in the community. Let it begin to take hold that God has put you strategically where you are and he wants you to light the light in, in that community. That because of your presence, God, uh, uh, as people can see God. And that is the role that Mary plays here. So now, she says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. I like the fact that before she meets people, she first of all meets God. Before we talk to people, we must remember, let's consult God. It doesn't matter what profession it might be. I have heard a good friend of mine who is a doctor uh, who says, you know, each time I'm, I'm, I'm about to do surgery, first of all, I pray to God uh, to give me wisdom so that I know how to deal with this particular situation. Talk to God. It doesn't matter how educated you might be. In the eyes of God, you are nothing. God is so vast in his knowledge. He is able to provide all that you need. So talk to God before you talk to people. And this is what Mary does here. So she tells the people, and this is very good advice. She says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Do it. Do it. Jesus has just had this encounter. He has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he is tired. The devil comes to tempt him to speak to the stones so that they could turn into bread. I love how Jesus responds in Matthew 4 verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Whatever it is God has said, let's do it. This is what is critical. Not just some of the things God has said. So every time you are faced with a situation, first of all find out, as I go to scripture, has God said anything about this particular situation of mine? If God has said something about it, do what he has said. Don't play with life. Our young people, again, I talk to you as our young people. There are so many young people today who do not look to God when you find yourself in 
a social setting and you fall in love with somebody and instead of finding out in the word of God that particular relationship whether God would sanction it, you go ahead as simply on account of the fact that you have feelings for this particular person. Go to the word of God. Find out what the word of God says. When you find out what the word of God says, do it. God knows what he is doing. Do it. So the mother says, whatever he says, do what? Do it. So in verse 7, Jesus now speaks to the servants. He says to them, fill the water pots with water. And now notice, and they filled them up to the brim. What a beautiful response to God. Oh, my, my dear friends, when God speaks to you, when God is calling you, don't walk, run. Whatever is done on behalf of God, do it with passion. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, whatever you do, uh, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Colossians 3.23 Whatever you find to do, do it as if you are doing it. For the Lord who is going to give you a reward. Be passionate about the things of God. Can you imagine the response of these servants to Jesus' instruction if they wanted they would have simply filled the water pots half full. If they wanted, they would have filled them uh, at three quarters full. But they decided, let's fill them to the brim. And these are people who did not even have an understanding of Christ. They didn't know that he was God. But in obeying the instructions, they are so passionate. Now, here is what would have happened. After that water was turned into wine, or let's put it this way, the amount of water that was turned into wine was proportionate to the amount that was in the pots. If the amount was half full, what it would have meant was that the water that would have turned into wine would have been half full. You know, what we receive from God many times is a reflection of our own attitude toward God. That's how it is. If you are passionate about God, if you believe in God, if you have faith in God, God will be passionate. His attitude toward you will be a passionate one. But now notice what happens. The majority of us are half-hearted when we approach the things of God. We are always doing them haphazardly. We don't care. Jesus was born in the manger. So we don't have to care what we do when it comes to the things of God. Be passionate. Your attitude toward God will determine God's attitude toward you. You complain, no, God doesn't answer my prayers. Ask yourself, how do you respond when God speaks to you? That is what is critical. Now notice uh, in this, when the, the, this has happened and uh, Jesus says uh, to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they do this. I, you know, when the master of the banquet um, tastes this water, 
he speaks to the room and he says I'm surprised how you have done your thing because generally what happens is that we begin by providing good wine and later on when people have drunk too much then we can you know give them the inferior but you've done the exact opposite And strangely, this man, as he listens, he acts as if he is responsible for this particular miracle. Shame on him. This thing, the one who caused it to happen, is Jesus Christ. Now, look at yourself. You are an accomplished singer, perhaps. Oh, you uh, an accomplished somebody in your area of influence. There is a tendency to think, I am the one who created it. When you sat for your exams, you were always top in your class. Among your peers, you have no one who compares with you when you handle your subject. Oh, everybody is wild. And there is a tendency to think, you are the one who gave it to yourself. It did not come because of you. It came because of God. There are people who don't want to work. They are so proud. You know, if they are not there, like if it is in the choir, your voice is so critical. If you are not there, you can even say, that song, they will not be able to do it. They will have to come after me to talk to me nicely before I can sing. You are not the one who created that particular gift. It was given to you by God. Learn to be humble. In this story, if I were Christ, I would have picked the microphone. Go in front like the way I'm speaking and I would have said, guys, I am the one who did this. What you have seen actually, just a simple thing. Where we are going, I'm going to do actually much more. Where we are going, you will see more ahead. You will see. I have somebody that is a close friend of mine. Uh, as we go into the future, he will die. And you will see that I even have the capacity to bring people who have died to life. I would have picked the microphone to just talk. But now, I love Christ. He doesn't go in front to pick the microphone. In the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, even though he was very God, did not count equality something to be grasped. When he came here, there are so many things he would have corrected about the beliefs in uh, the then physical world, physics world, uh, about beliefs in astronomy. There are so many things Jesus would have taken time to correct, but he understood that this was not the reason why he came. Oh, my dear friends, let me say something to us this morning. When you become a child of God, you need to bear the mind of Christ in you. It has nothing to do with showing off. There are people today who are driving expensive vehicles. They have the money. But when they bought those vehicles, the idea was, I need to show that I am somebody. When you become a child of God, it is not a showing of thing. Have the mind of Christ. Be simple. Be humble. This is what this story is teaching us. So he... He confesses, he says, in verse 10, which is where I end. He said, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. You know, we live in this world. And many times as people... We are tempted. Some of the people I know, even from Kenya, have felt life in Kenya 
is not good life. So let's go to live in the United Kingdom or maybe the US or maybe Canada or maybe Australia. But the truth of the matter is that there in Australia, there are also hospitals. There in the United States, there are also prisons. There in England, people get killed. It is the not sheer. No. And Jesus demonstrates that the life we are looking for will not be sheer. There is going to come a time, in the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Oh, he shows that grand moment when the skies will be ablaze with Jesus, attended by a retinue of angels. Covering the entire sky, the uh, sound of the trumpet, and those who have died in Jesus Christ will be raised. I see the Son of Man as he rides in the air, no longer as the humble man of Galilee, but as King of kings and Lord of lords. Look at this particular scene. As the trumpet is blown, the people who have died in Christ are raised, together with the righteous living they are caught up in the air to meet Jesus in the air. And they are in the air to jump into this gigantic chariot. I want to be in that chariot as it moves up, as it goes higher and higher. I begin to look for some of the people I met here at New Life Church. Pastor Akali, are you there? In the meantime, this thing is doing what? It is going up. Pastor Alo, are you here? In the meantime, this thing is going up higher and higher. This beautiful exercise, you know, I have said when I am there, I begin out to look for my family. All these people whose names are mentioned, I begin to look for them. Where are they in this beautiful thing? And as I look for them, praise God, each single one of them is there. And then in the meantime, this thing is moving higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until finally we are ushered into the great kingdom of God. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, it did not matter what color skin, whoever believed in his name, it did not matter what language they spoke. Oh, whoever believes in him, it did not matter whether they were poor or rich, whether they were educated or uneducated. Now, the kingdom is delivered to those who believed. Now, I want to end this way because, I mean, I just love this. We are now in the kingdom. We are now in the kingdom. And uh, I just want to take some time to meet Jesus face to face. And so I speak to my guardian angel. You've been here, my guy. When we were down on earth, God laid you into protecting me when I should have been smitten uh, by evil forces. God sent you to protect me. Now I want you to make an arrangement for me to meet Jesus. An arrangement is made. And now, for the first time, George wants a face to face with the one who died on the cross for me. There I am reminded in the garden as he cries out to his father, my father, all things are possible with you even in this moment. You can let this hour pass from me. But as Jesus thinks about George Mwansa, he knows if I don't go all the way to the cross, what becomes of George Mwansa? 
And so he prays back. Nevertheless, not your will, but my, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will. So face to face with Jesus, my Savior, who loved me to the point that even if I had been the only one on earth, he would have come to die for me face to face in the presence of the one who loved me, who cared for me and made sure that I made it to the kingdom. Not my works, no, but by grace through Jesus Christ. Face to face. I... I, I have to bow, I have to, to you know, to just uh, fall to the ground in adoration. But this is not, oh, I want to meet the Holy Spirit, faithful guide. An arrangement is made. And as I look into his face, oh, many times when I wandered far away, he brought me back into the fold. To the ground I go in adoration. Then the big man himself, God Almighty. And I go to Gabriel and say, man, you know the protocols, you know the uh, things in, in the, this place. Uh, can you just organize for me, you know, alone. I don't want to be with all those, my kids, uh, my wife, and everybody. I just want to be alone and look at God. An appointment is made. And uh, before Jehovah's awful throne, oh my, I can begin to just feel the, you know, the joy. God who loved me so much that when his son prayed, Father, take this cup away from me, he denied that request because he loved me. My dear friends, if somebody has to be saved in the kingdom of God, let it be George Mwansa. Let it be you. Let it be us who are in this room. Before I conclude, I'm going to ask Gift to give us that beautiful song that reminds us that someday it will happen. A place where there will be no Pain. There will be no sorrow. Gift, where are you? Help me to take this message to the people. And as she sings this song, put yourself into the picture. How much God loves you and how he cares that one day you should be saved. After Gift has sung, I am going to make an appeal to you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to make the important decision. Gift, gift us with that song. So as we prepare for the song, prepare your heart. Because I'm going to make a call to you. Prepare to meet Jesus. Our technical team. Um... Maybe as we wait for technology to do, uh, to come, gift, I'm going to ask you to stand by as we wait for everything to be restored. Uh, my dear people in this audience, I would like to appeal, first of all, to our young people. I know for a fact that in this audience here, 
there are some young people who are trapped. Trapped in alcohol. Trapped in drugs. You come to church, fine. And of all places you needed to be is this place. But you know that in the dark when you are just alone, you struggle. You know that even though human beings may not understand your situation, nobody knows about that situation, you yourself know that you are a slave to alcohol and drugs. God wants to set you free. Because in the kingdom that I have described, there will be no drug addicts. There will be no people who are trapped like that. But thank God, now, where we are in this probationary time, God is giving you an opportunity to offer yourself to him so that he can do for you that which you cannot do for yourself. Look at Jesus Christ. Ordinary water is turned into wine. God has the capacity. He can do it. I don't care how steeped you are into drugs and into alcohol. I don't care. God has a capacity. He can transform your life. There are young people here who are trapped in pornography. I want to speak to you, my young people. The intention to be well someday must be calculated for whatever you intend to become tomorrow, you must begin to become today. Don't ever hope that your problem will go in the near future. The period that God gives you to do something about your situation is now. Lost into pornography. Lost into sex addiction. God can help you right now. He can free you. Before I go, you are ready gift. Thank you very much. Again, network issues. So at the end, we'll ask her to sing that uh, song. Let me speak to somebody here. You do come to church. And for you, it is simply an issue of church. Nothing more, nothing to it. As God speaks to your heart today, I want you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. In a few hours from now, we will have people who are going to be baptized. If you know that you have been wasting your time out in the world, I'm going to appeal to you to surrender your life so that God can take over. In this story, I'm also going to appeal to two other groups of people. And this is the person who in this audience feels that somehow my life has been like water. I need Jesus Christ to touch my life so that I move from being just a nominal Christian. I want to shine for Jesus Christ in these last days. God can do it. Your intention, he can work on your will and transform you so that this nominalism, this idea of you simply showing up to church and 
You know that in your life nothing really works. Nominalism. I want you, I'm going to invite you to come forward as well. You are saying, I want God to do the miracle that he did here. My life, which is ordinary life, I want to change into wine. I want to live for Christ. I want to be a witness for Christ. I want to be all that God intended for me in this life. I will offer myself. I don't know how the future is going to be, but I know the one who holds my future. And I want to put my life into the able hands of that one who has the power. I am tired to simply be going to church to do church when nothing really happens. I am going to invite somebody from this audience who feels I am tired of living a lifeless life. Yes, fine, I do come to church, but I want my life to be transformed. I'm going to ask you to come forward. And lastly, this will be the last day that we will do this. When Jesus told his disciples to go out into the world, he said, as you meet people who are sick, pray for them. I think of the mother we met in Kibera who was sick and she hadn't been well. And, you know, just the feeling of knowing that when we pray, the beautiful feet of people who take the good news. When we pray, not for us, but because of Christ who died for us. Things happen. So I, I'm going to offer an opportunity. Those groups of people... Uh, gift are you is the internet okay
My young people, I asked particularly a young person to sing that song to show that the kingdom of God is for young people. And if you are there this morning, I don't know how I can appeal to your heart. I don't want any of our young people to be lost. Whatever your situation could be, God can offer help today, now. So as I ask our choristers to lead us in some song, Come forward if you know you are trapped in sin. Come forward if you know that you want to say goodbye. You want baptism today. Come forward if you know my life is like water. I want God to transform me so that I can be the light of his world. Come forward if you know you have a physical ailment. You are not coming to me. You are simply coming to the one with whom nothing is impossible. As the choristers are seen, come forward. We'll turn to song 309, I Surrender All. Let's all rise. Let's all rise. Unto Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him.
Let me speak to somebody. I know with no doubt in my mind there is a young person in the audience. You are stuck. Those who seek to destroy you are whispering voices to you. Don't listen to that voice. Listen to the one who stood for you in the garden of Gethsemane. When he was about to throw in the towel, he thought about you. If I don't go all the way to the cross to die for you, to die for you, what will become of you? Forget about those voices and listen to the beautiful voice of your Savior who died on the cross in order to redeem you. You have the opportunity to be rescued, to be freed by God. There is nothing impossible with God. It doesn't matter, let me repeat. Your mind is reminding you of your past, your resolutions in the past and how you have failed. God can do it, but you need to take a stand. God says, those who honor me, I will honor them. He says, Jesus says, the ones who can show up for me, I will not show up for them. I'm just paraphrasing the words of Christ. So as we sing again, those people, number one, you know that my life, I want to be on fire for God. I'm tired of this religion of simply going to church when nothing is happening. I will invite you to come forward. God can transform your life. If you are stuck in addictions, God can transform your life. Baptism, God is asking you to come forward. An illness, God is asking you to come forward. He can do it. It doesn't matter what they have said at the hospital. God defies logic. So once again as we sing, move from where you are and come.
Thank you very much. We all understand that this is an online program as well. So we are mindful of the time. But while we are mindful of the time, we are also mindful of the fact that there could be one young person in the audience. We will only sing the first stanza of this song. You are struggling with the powers of darkness. God is here to save you. Come forward. people who are always looking to the future, to tomorrow. Tomorrow has never been promised anyone. This is the reason why the Bible says when you hear the voice of God today, do not harden your heart. Because it may well be that you will never hear the voice of God in the manner you have heard it today. Any time in the future. Do we have any? Anyone? Before I pray. Our eyes are closed. Our Father who lives in heaven. The people that you willed to save. Those whom you saw that as the Spirit would speak. They would not just rise to their feet but they would walk to the front to demonstrate their faith in your capacity to save them. They are here in front. And now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pronounce a blessing upon them. People who have come because they are tired of living lifeless lives. They want something to happen. They want their lives to be changed. They have come. And I ask you, God, to take over. Some may have been stuck in the addictions of this life. By faith they have walked here. With the understanding that you God who can speak. 
and create something out of nothing, you will help them. They made mistakes. But you are a gracious father who does not deal with us according to our mistakes, according to our sins. Now that they have come, protect them from the evil one. Save them so completely. Transform their wheels. And be able to demonstrate that with you nothing is impossible. I pray for those who seek salvation. Oh God, if there is a request that always without exception you say yes to, it is that request of a person who wants to be saved. So here in front, if there is such a person, I pray, God Almighty, I thank you that you have accepted them in the family. Here in front, those who have decided to say goodbye to the world and they want to demonstrate this through the rite of baptism. Almighty God, save them, protect them. Some here walked to the front because of an illness. Maybe something that is terminal as far as human ingenuity and capacity is concerned. Nothing can be done. Luke 1, 37, with God, nothing is impossible. You can do it. You have a capacity. All who have come. I may not have mentioned the reason why they are here. But Lord, you do understand them. I pray that you will take full control. We took time to talk about the coming kingdom. All of these in their number. When Jesus comes, please receive them in your kingdom. Now I ask for a blessing upon all the members of this congregation. Our leaders, those called to serve in various departments, and all our members who come here, show mercy. Transform them into the likeness of your son, Jesus. I ask for a special blessing upon all your people in this congregation in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior and King. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Don't sit. Don't go yet. Don't go yet, please. Can uh, the, those the of you who came to the Lord, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Those of you who came in front, don't go yet. Please come back. Come back. Thank you very much, Pastor. And we praise God for the overwhelming, convicting power of the Word of God, the tremendous and great insight and light from His Word that we have benefited from, from the servant of the Lord. Pastor, God bless you. Uh, for those of you who have come in front, we appreciate you and we thank you. Um, we have those whom we have already processed for baptism. And uh, we are also uh, of this understanding that you also have come for the same. I would like to ask you to go with Pastor Law, Pastor Ezra, Pastor Law, and Elder Omurua. Uh, please meet with these dear friends uh, so that we can be able to process their request. If it will require baptism, they can join this other one that I will be taking through the vows. So. Yeah, so uh, the elders, the pastors and the elders will process your request. Uh, if it is for prayer, they will pray for you. If you are desirous of baptism, they will manage that. So please, get into this room that is here. While I remain with those ones who 
are ready for baptism. Our board members, uh, we will ask you uh, to move out on the other side of the church, just in case Elder will need your help. He will find you uh, in an appropriate place. Sister Jamatia, uh, we can have uh, Sister Naomi or one of our, or Brother Ezra to process those ones inside as you remain here to help me out here. Uh, standing before us, dear brothers and sisters, are uh, uh, brothers and sisters who have given their lives to Jesus as a result of the evangelistic campaign that has been ongoing, and they are desirous to be baptized. And in pursuance of our church manual provision, I would like to ask Sister Jematia uh, to bring the motion of their request for baptism before us. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Um, I'm here to move a motion of the baptismal candidates we have in front of us. Um, we had a special church board this morning, and um, the names that we had who had come to class were 13. And um, as, as you can see, the ones that are standing in front of you are 15 in total. So um, I'll read their names in your hearing. We have Paulina Tieno, Agola, Wendy Awiti Otieno, Chance Gweth Gimono, Janet Nyanduko, Mangera, Grace Makundi Nyarango, Jason Baraka Osoro, Lydia Nyachero Osoro, Regina Apin Oyugi, Samson Kenyanya Moturi, Dan Otieno Owang, Titus Kipchirchir Koril, Dick Opar Anton, Florence Acheng Angir, Naum Kwamboka Mongare and George Opio Okwaro. Um, there was one who stood who came for prayer and is being processed. The pastor will guide on that. But I therefore move that we should allow the fifteen members standing in front of you to be baptized. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Janet. Anybody seconding the motion uh, to the motion of the request of our sisters and brothers to be baptized? Anybody seconding the motion? Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion, any observation? Any discussion, any observation on this request? All in favor, can I see by a show of hand those of us who are in favor that we have our sisters and brothers baptized? Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. Now, with uh, this uh, accepted and... Uh, with Jesus already having given his life by death on the cross as a sacrifice for the atonement of our sins, he has demonstrated his commitment to you, his love for you, his love for us. The Bible identifies Jesus in many ways, but one of those ways it identifies him is as the bride and those who believe in him one way the bible identifies jesus is as the groom the groom and the church as his bride and as the groom he has already demonstrated his commitment to us by his death and we would like you also to demonstrate your commitment to him by taking the vows that follows. If you are in agreement as the bride of Christ, as children of the kingdom who have experienced God's moving in your life and who are convicted of sins and unrepentant of the same, 
and are joyful to know the saving grace that is available in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's death and have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. It will be your honor to say yes I do uh, to these vows that I take us through. Uh, shall we? Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, a unity of three core eternal persons? Do you believe? Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace, through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Thank you. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Thank you very much. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of his transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Do you look forward do you accept the ten? Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired word? Is God's inspired word the only rule of faith and practice for Christians? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Do you accept the ten commandments? as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. Is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and a memorial of creation? Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality as it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 54 as you prepare to meet the Lord will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talents in personal soul winning endeavor to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Do you accept the Bible teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? Do you believe in church organization? Is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful and abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sell of alcoholic beverages, from the use, manufacture, or sell of tobacco in any of its forms for human consumption, and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics and other drugs, Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles 
as taught by the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the ten, the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? Last but not least, do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church? Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. Uh, shall we pray? <clears throat> Loving Father, eternal God, Lord God Almighty, our Creator, our Savior, and our Sustainer, you alone, Lord, in whom we live, move, and have our being, and without whom we can't be before your presence in the name of Jesus we come to say thank you for the gift of life but we thank you dear Lord much more for the gift of salvation that you have offered and given to us in your son Jesus we praise your name for the event of the moment the abundant life in the now evangelistic campaign series and we pray Lord that in the process of enjoying this moment you have been moving in the lives of your children and on account of your movement in their lives you have caused conviction in their hearts convicted of sin convicted of our waywardness but also you have helped them to appreciate your great love because on account of, of our conviction condemned to eternal destruction we remain hopeless and helpless but you who loves did not leave us and has not lived left humanity helpless and hopeless because when we fell in sin in our first parents, Adam and Eve, you already had a plan to save us, that your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And we stand here grateful forever, Lord, for the death of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have moved in the hearts of your children to fall in love with your son Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross to fall in love with you O oh God in your totality of Godhead and they have surrendered to their Lord to your Lordship have accepted you in their lives they have let go their ways and let you have your way in their lives and today they stand here in confession of you as their Lord and their Savior and accepting you to be Lord in their lives and they, here they are to be baptized as a public expression of the transaction that has already happened in their hearts their surrender of their lives to you as their Lord and Savior we pray dear Lord that you keep them in you first and foremost forever and ever and as they are baptized. May your name be glorified. Keep them in you the rest of their lives. We are grateful as a judge to be here to witness their surrender to you and their baptism as a demonstration of this happening that has already happened in their lives. We pray that as we witness their baptism, 
you will give us the grace, those of us who were baptized here before, to re renew our commitment to you and to commit to abide in you the rest of our lives. And for those of us, Lord, who have not come to what your children have come to, to surrender their lives to you, as we witness this baptism, we pray that you give us the grace, dear Lord, that one day we will come to this surrender as well. May this be our experience, dear Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the choristers will continue uh, to bring the worship to uh, its conclusion. But even as we finish with the benediction, we will proceed on straight to baptism. And those of you who are able to remain and witness their wit baptism, we welcome you. Those of you who for the pressure of life and other commitments you will wish to leave, feel free. But we welcome all of you to witness the baptism of our sisters and brothers. Uh, I will hand over these dear brothers and sisters into the hands of deacons and deaconesses to get them ready uh, and to get the water ready so that we begin the baptism straight away. Thank you. So the name is standing here. Remain here. Remain here. The deacons will take you. Remain here. Remain here. Just remain here. The deacons will come for you. Remain here. We'll sing song 213, Jesus is coming again. Song 213. the trumpet lift up the trumpet and now let it ring let's sing lift up the trumpet and now let it ring Jesus is coming again cheer up you pilgrim be joyful and sing Jesus is coming again Jesus. 
let's turn to song 321 my jesus i love thee my jesus i love thee 